All right. And we are live. And Travis is laughing. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to the last word. <laughs> Front camp, fresh from that Friday night campfire, Lord Cognito and Ebontis. E, man, what's going on? It's just a regular day, right? Nothing special going on. Right? Yeah, it's just pretty chill. No news yesterday. No company, you know, change of so much happened yesterday. We have a lot to talk about. It's kind of insane. But we have an amazing guest joining us, royalty of the gaming world. So we've got to introduce him properly. So tossing it right back today. It's yours, sir. Let's go, man. Welcome to The Last Word, episode number 124. It's another glorious Friday. We're back in front of the campfire for some more looter shooter discussion. I'm extremely excited about our special guest. So we're going to get right into it. I want to introduce a true lord who is not only legally befitting of the title, but is also an absolute connoisseur when it comes to the world of destiny. Whether it be his passion for the grimoire or insightful hot takes, all done with McClunky Flair. <laughs> Introducing the reviewer slash online personality for IGN and a panelist of Destiny's Fire Team Chat, the Lord of Suits and Neckties, <laughs> unapologetic Titan Main, whose photo image has finally Bless the FTC banner <laughs> <laughs> live from San Francisco and kind enough to make his debut at the campfire of the last word. My man, Lord, Ty, Guy, Travis, how are we doing, sir? McClunky, my friends. That, unless, <laughs> may I say, that is the greatest intro I have ever or probably will ever receive. So thank you very much for that. Hey, come on. You got to shoot for the stars, right? That's just where you begin. <laughs> I feel like a star. You've really welcomed me here at this Salute. campfire, so thank you. Salute, man. Absolute pleasure to have you at the last word, man. Big fan. Love the energy you bring to IGN and Fireteam Chat. Obviously, we had a chance to podcast together on Fireteam Chat, which was awesome. And um, I had yes. to throw the fire, I had to throw the, the banner reference. He was like, yeah, you had to hear, he was like, when am I going to get my picture oh, no. on the I've, thing? I, I've, I've listened to like literally every episode of Fire Team Chat. So it, began, it was that running joke recently. And you finally were there. It's like, he has made yeah. it. He has ascended. He's ascended. But shout yeah. out to our boy CJ Gibson. Because CJ oh put out a God. funny tweet. He's like, well, at least. Because they have a graphic when CJ was on. Mm -hmm. And the Fire yeah. Team Chat logo covers his face. Yes. yes. <laughs> so he's like, at least that didn't happen to you. <laughs> so shout out, yeah. shout out to Travis. You, the, your the face is actually visible. Oh, yeah, the, the graphics were adjusted and all of a sudden, oh, we've got space for the new guys. See, Jez over there like... <laughs> just covered. Just got yeah, egg on so his face. There's actually a story behind that, which is oh, that it absolutely it. was intentional. Destin oh. had been joking about <laughs> they were going to change the banner for years. CJ was on 100 episodes and he hmm. was like, how am I not on the banner yet? Like, it doesn't make any sense. It, you know, I've, I've been on the show. Like, people seem to like me. My opinions, like, people put me seem on to the like banner. Me. Yeah, that, he's like, put me on the banner. And so <laughs> Destin was like, all right, CJ, we're going to take your headshots. We're going to put you on the banner. And so CJ goes through the whole process of getting his headshots taken. He dresses up, gets his hair cut. <laughs> and then the week that he gets put on the banner, they put the logo right over his face. <laughs> oh, my God. Amazing. Amazing. Shout out to Destin amazing. for being messy and petty. Salute. <laughs> oh, it was great, dude. And then for the for the last week, any time I saw him, I would mm -hmm. just crack up around the office, just absolutely <laughs> laugh at, at them. Oh, oh my God. Oh. So Oh, man. Absolute classic, man. But otherwise, what's been going on, man? You know, just uh, trying to grind out the Festival of the Lost. I'm late to the game. I, I just got done reviewing Genshin Impact for IGN. I, I had that'll, played that that'll game suck for the life out of you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was. I, I put over 150 hours into that game God. in two weeks. So Holy I crap. absolutely just like you know was was uh, was sucked into that and time to get the review out. So. Yeah, um, now I'm back in Destiny uh, and mm -hmm. getting ready for my next IGN review, which is uh, Destiny 2 Beyond Light for Dang. the Xbox Series X and PC is what I'm going to be nice. playing. You got that early preview. So what information can you tell us or what's the early build? What's it looking like? Yeah, let's break, break NDA right now. Come on. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and tell you everything I know, <laughs> <laughs> which is that... Uh, you, you can, get it the same day uh, we do, right? You can pre-order Destiny 2 Beyond Light. You get it with that marketing disclaimer. The boy, the boy yeah. is well trained. Get, you get your statues. You know. Get your statues and your pre-order weapons and catalyst, please. No yeah. doubt. <laughs> there you go. And yeah, so so uh, that's going to be really exciting, as you guys mm -hmm. know. And uh, 
see you online if you're Absolute. on PC or Xbox. Absolute. Very so much. I, I dragged this man to PC, so yeah, we're we're there. I'm I'm forced I know, here and he for was another very month. reluctant. We, I know. We talked about this I'm on aware of, Yeah, chat. I was like, <laughs> I know. I was like, it's where to play. And even now, he's like. I gotta, I gotta be on PC for even a little bit longer. I was like, yeah, because it's such a hard place to be. They won't let me escape. It is because Crucible <laughs> is unplayable. I'm sorry, you. PC's garbage. I'm I sorry, love this it's, man. It's I just love not it. good. You, you know what? You for that statement, every week you're allowed to come back. Cameo, there we go. Just, that was <laughs> classic right there. Thank you for the PvP guys. Oh, it's brutal. It's like brutal. here. I, I I respect PC as a platform for yeah, people absolutely. who really have the energy for it. It it sure energy. pays dividends and that sort of thing, but mm -hmm. it's just toxic, man. P crucible yeah, as a bad. crucible main, PC is just unpalatable. You can't really play it on it. So yeah, yeah. it's, it's just a little little spooky, especially with I was playing we're playing Gambit, people cheating game. I'm like, oh, <sighs> it's Gambit. I saw that. Guys, I was like, guys. who even? First of all, who plays Gambit? Yeah. First of all, but voluntarily enough Gambit? to cheat. Yeah. 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 It's insane. No, no. So. so, E, man, we got a lot of history with, uh, with Travis here. So let's start with the questions, man. What you got for me? So I'm gonna, I, might, I might steal one from you, but I want this mm -hmm. story. You may already have it. I don't know. I've got to know McClunky. Oh, I know McClunky. This. I think yeah. I know this. Yeah. Do you, do you like, know? So, okay, so... So there's I've, a there's a there's kind of like a, a spectrum of knowledge when it comes to McClunky, <laughs> and it is based on how well you are familiar with Star Wars. Star Wars. So yeah. I do saw you the know tweet. The, do you know where McClunky's from in general? I don't. No. So right. The and, phrase. And our okay, viewers so. may not either. So feel free okay, to well, fill us in, please, because so, I had to research. So, as you know. Uh, George Lucas has sort of been obsessed with changing the original trilogy of Star Wars movies since he released them. And uh, there's some pettiness involved. Originally, he changed it because his ex-wife uh, did the editing on the original Star Wars movie. And so he re-edited it so that he could avoid giving her royalties when they oh got a divorce. So that's why. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. But anyway, so that's that's like a little bit of Star Wars trivia for you. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Exactly. Shout out for the penny this guy. Continue. Yeah. So that that's that's sort of how it started. And and then, you know, he he invented the Lucasfilm sort of pioneered 3D animation, you know, they created the technology that would eventually become Pixar. They were the first ones to have like, you know, the, the 3D rendered, you know, stuff in, in the original uh, prequel trilogy. And, and he put them originally into the original trilogy uh, after, you know, in the VHS special edition remake, which a lot of people hated. <laughs> um, and so ever since then, he's just sort of unapologetically changed the Star Wars original <laughs> trilogy. And we thought it was over because five years ago, he sold the rights to Star Wars to Disney. And we were like, all right, well, he's not allowed to just like, I change things whenever I want to, you know, like <laughs> he, 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 like one of the things he just decided was there had been a question for years of like, what is Obi-Wan Kenobi's home planet? And mm -hmm. somebody asked him, it was Jon Stewart, was interviewing him at Star Wars Celebration. John Stewart is a huge Star Wars fan, and he said, "Hey, uh, you know what's Obi Wan's home planet?" And George Lucas, just because he was annoyed at continuing to hear the question, he said he's from the Stu John system, and then that became canon. No, just like that, like, oh, he's from the Stu John system. Your name's John mm. Stewart. I'm tired of hearing it, and it's wow. canon, just like that. So he he like <laughs> had this magical power to just change Star Wars whenever he wanted, and and fans were not having it. They're like wow. not a fan of of his ability to do this. And then finally, Disney re-released the original trilogy on Disney Plus. It was yeah. the yes. first time we had seen Disney create. Uh, you know, the kind of flex their muscles with mm -hmm. the with the original trilogy. Mm -hmm. And when they did it, there was one change again to the original Star Wars trilogy. And uh, that change was done uh, not by Disney. It was apparently changed by George Lucas before, right before he mm -hmm. sold the rights to Disney. And that mm -hmm. change, for whatever reason, <laughs> was to the Han Solo Greedo duel that see, happens yeah. in like the cantino in the in the new hope all right yep. and so this is like one of the most hated scenes in star wars <laughs> because george lucas changed it originally han solo shoots greedo without a word and it sort of sets up this arc of redemption for han that he's sort of like this ruthless killer and then he kind of gains a heart of gold throughout the trilogy it's a really nice arc George Lucas ruins it by trying to make the movie more of a kid film. I'm sorry, I could talk about Star Wars for hours no, if you want me. Knowledge, but no. uh, or yeah, you get so, all of it. so 
Mm -hmm. George Lucas, in, a, in, a, in an effort to make it more kid friendly, changed the scene so that Greedo shoots first and Han, using CGI, dodges him by his character just literally being moved yeah. like six <laughs> inches to the left and mm -hmm. then fires back on Greedo. And so instead it's like, oh, Han was shooting in self-defense. He didn't just kill Greedo out of nowhere. Right. And so this new change in Disney Plus was even worse, which is that not only does Greedo shoot first, but they do a close up on Greedo's face and he says, McClanky, just like that. <laughs> and then it cuts back and it shows Han Solo dodging the move and shooting back. And McClunky is Hatice. If you speak a little Hatice as I do, then oh. you would know that McClunky uh, is, is Hatice for uh, this is the end for you. And so it's mm. not only is Greedo shooting first, but he's also threatening oh, he's yeah. talking, verbally he's talk. saying, I'm going to kill you. So that wow. even more justifies Han killing him and therefore even more ruins uh, Han Solo's arc. Um, oh, that's awful. So yeah, that, wow, awful. that is that is a little bit of it. So yeah. th this this happened on a Friday when uh, Disney Plus came to Star Wars, and I was watching it because I watched Star Wars about you know a couple times it's a year, house. and it was on. Oh, it's on Disney Plus. Time to watch it. Mm -hmm. And I saw the McClunky scene. I was one of the first people probably to see the McClunky scene. It was like 20 <laughs> minutes after it came out on Disney Plus, and it was just. It blew up the internet and we were recording a Fireteam Chat episode that day. And I was, we were talking about a Fireteam Chat, how everybody had a catchphrase except uh, me. I didn't okay. have a catchphrase. Oh, I'm saying And so McClunky just showed up and I just, I threw McClunky out there and Destin and Brian weren't expecting it and they started cracking up on the show. And I was like, that's it now. That's my that's catchphrase. It. That's it's it. just McClunky. It See, it now you have to say it like it. McClunky or however you say it. McClunky. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah, not, uh... I love, yeah, you do the better impression. I don't know. You're doing great. Yeah. You're doing great. But yeah. It's just so uh, awkwardly unnecessary. Like, it's just hilarious. It's like, I, I was, when I saw it, I saw I did my research on it. Cause I didn't know what it was either till you eloquently described it. Yeah, I saw so the I tweet. Just... I saw the tweet and I was like, "Is that what?" Because I knew the Star Wars. Like you had that, and then I saw the tweet and I'm like, "But I don't. I didn't is remember it, it, it and then Star I haven't Wars watched thing? it recently." Yeah, so I was like, "Apparently, mm -hmm. okay." So we're getting there. Yeah, it, it's a it's a horrible Star Wars thing. And the way I like to think of it, my mm -hmm. use of McClunky, because if you Google McClunky, the first mm -hmm. thing you get are a bunch of articles about how that was weirdly added to Star Wars, and then you get me. It's like associated <laughs> with like me as my online identity. Oh, rock which with is it, brother. great. Rock with <laughs> which it. I absolutely love. Rock with um, it, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but but what I, what I like to think of it is, is it's in this long tradition of Star mm -hmm. Wars fans taking terrible things that happened to Star Wars, like the prequels, and turning them into beloved parts of it, right? Like yes. now the prequels have been memed so hard, people love the prequels. And so yes. I like to think of my use of McClunky and using it as <laughs> like a, a replacement for, you know, Excelsior or, or what have you. There you go. Uh, th that's my contribution to, to turning a terrible <laughs> Star Wars thing into something that maybe people I don't. I don't know if you can start a show better than that. Damn. No, we got. <laughs> we got all the history. Like, we, got. we got to wrap it up right here. We can't do any better. No, just kidding. Nah, dude, it's awesome, man. So yeah, man. Like tremendous history. Before before I know we get into IGN stuff, you know, just gaming in general, man. You know, tremendous, tremendous history. Give us some of those like passionate consoles and games that really kind of sure. got you excited in gaming before your trajectory, obviously, to, to Destiny. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I think for me, I've got introduced into video games really early because my my grandpa was like just a kind of a an old school nerd. You know, you know back back when we were kids, Cognito nerds mm -hmm. had shame. You know, yes, yes, something it was that not you cool had to be ashamed stuff. about. Yes, um, yes, I kind of grew up it. in that. Uh, now nerds rule the world, and they're allowed exactly. to just be openly nerdy. But uh, Ooh, these I, kids I'm don't a nerd know. Who, <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, I, I'm a nerd who still has shame. Uh, and and uh, I think that <laughs> my, my grandpa was in that and he uh, the Atari was a really interesting system because it came, it had a few games, but the main feature of it was you could write your own games. And my grandpa tried to do that. And so he had this really old Atari and it had a few games on it and I played it. And I was mm -hmm. sort of obsessed with video games even from back then. It was just like, it was so cool. And Nintendo came out with their stuff and I played Mario and it was like, I don't care what I'm doing in life. I want to be involved in video games mm -hmm. somehow. Like I need to get uh need to need to have be a part of this and so that 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 sort of started me off but i think you know the first uh the first games that that like i really remembered were legend of zelda i know it was nice. huge on me that was like a game that just like blew me out of the water mm -hmm. uh, i did play 
I, I was like a Nintendo fanboy, but I played a lot of Sega too. I played a lot of Sonic uh, the Hedgehog. I played Sonic the Hedgehog. As if me saying Sonic is going to confuse you who I'm talking about in games. <laughs> right? like, Who's that guy? Say the Hedgehog, Which Sonic? Yes. Which Sonic? Are you talking about a cheeseburger? The um, food blazer? No. So, uh, <laughs> Love that. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I played a lot of that. Um, but for me, I think the moment that for me was like a big defining moment was when the Xbox came out, Halo Combat Evolved. That was a game that really changed my life. There was something about landing on that ring yeah. and then the world just sort of opening up when on that first level, you know, yeah. that just Absolutely. was like, wait, I can do. And you go back now, yeah. it's such a small area. There's like three yeah, objectives know, right. you do and but the level's that over. that sandbox at the time felt at liberating, time, right? It was just it like, was, you felt like how we feel about open worlds now. I guess back then right. we've never seen anything like that. So we're like, I, I can go there off in the distance. I can that's I right. can do that. Like, yeah, good good point. Valid point. Yeah, and it was it was a shooter. That was another thing, is that you weren't used to shooters were very they were almost on the rails. You were yeah. in Doom, you were walking through hallways, you know, that was the shooter mm -hmm. we're used to. Yep. So Halo Combat Evolved changed everything for me. I the story mm -hmm. was so gripping and a fact about me that mm -hmm. I'm sure will come up in the show is that I've read every Halo. Uh, expanded oh, universe law, book. Law I've spent I've spent hundreds mm. of hours reading Halo books. I'm like mm. a huge Halo nerd uh, when it comes mm -hmm. to that stuff. I'm I'm just a nerd in general, but there are a few <laughs> things that I go a little extra with my nerd. Like, extra, little, little yeah, extra yeah, bonus so, on top. You respect yeah, it. Mm -hmm. That is certainly one area. Um, and mm. and then the multiplayer, right? Like playing with my friends at the time, uh, not online, but then Halo 2 came out and I played Halo 2 for years, oh, land party with 16 people oh, in someone's uh, basement. That's you amazing. Days, yeah, dual wielding. Then, oh. That's right, yeah. And mm -hmm. so I think ever since Xbox came out, I've sort of really identified with that community. A lot of my friends play on it. I, mm -hmm. I think that they, they make a lot of really good games. Obviously, right. you know, I review games for IGN. I play every console. I play PC, I'll, you know, but Xbox, th those are where my boys at are at, you know, like yeah, that's where friends. my Destiny family is, my Bungie same. family from the Halo days. Mm -hmm. um, and, same and, you know, before that, I, that's I betray I'm... mine to PC, but same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, 60 frames, man, 60 frames. Good to continue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, so. Yeah, that mm -hmm. it, it, some of my favorite games, um, Bioshock. That Ooh. game, I think, just like raised the level of storytelling. Obviously, I like Mass Effect and some of the the basic games. But if, which, if, Mass honestly, Effect, which Mass Effect? I gotta ask you, which 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 one's your favorite? Two. My oh, man, my clunky. Two. Cool. See, I'm yeah. waiting. Yeah. I have about. never actually touched a Mass Effect. Which oh, is like get the trilogy. No, yeah, yeah. Definitive edition like, next that, year. Yeah, that definitive remaster, or whatever. That's that's got my name all over it. So yeah, yeah that that for sure is going to happen. Bro. It's like the worst kept secret in yeah. uh, gaming. It's like it's like Fable. Yeah. Remember when yes. Xbox was pretending for two weeks, for mm -hmm. two years, yes. that Fable wasn't a game, yes. yeah. and we all knew it was. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I think um, yeah, I, I think that that is for sure definitely something to hop on. Mass Effect. That Mass Effect Two was. Mm -hmm. Peak Mass Effect in my book. Absolutely. Um, but suicide Mission. Salute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Suicide Mission. Exactly. Salute. Also, Suicide Mission, one of the best songs in gaming. Oh, yes. The soundtrack for that song. It's just I like, about oh, that. gets yeah, your blood the, pumping. Yeah. I forgot um, all about that. Good point. Yeah. You got to go back and mm -hmm. listen to that song. It really like does a good job of provoking all those memories. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm one of those gamers who legitimately, not just saying this, legitimately likes every genre of video game. Like there's no genre I stay away from. I love platformers. I love fighting games. I love open world RPGs, addicted to shooters. I, I have a pretty good breadth of, of games. And I feel like that's um, in this world where there are a million games and all of them want you to play them for a hundred hours a week. Like yes. that's the world we live in now. And yeah. it, I feel like that's narrowing, you know, there's like the Fortnite group and there's the group that plays like indies and there's the Nintendo guys. And it's, it's sort of rare to find somebody like me who really has like a, a need. I have to own every game. I have to play mm, them oh, all. Yeah, I have wow. to know a little bit about everything. Wow. And I respect you for it's, that. Whew, it's tough. It's, yeah, tough. it's tough. That's, it's tough. Tough. that's just one of those when it comes to time, because I mean, there's so many games that'll come out that either I've missed or I jumped on and then another one pulled me away and then Destiny pulls me back. And because there's stuff like Horizon Zero Dawn started that one. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild came right after that. And then Destiny launched something, I'm pretty sure, in April right after that. So those two are finished sitting uncomplete amongst many other things. So when you're sitting there saying like you want to play everything like 
there's so many that like I'm I'm with you that I would love. Mine's pretty breath like pretty wide breadth too. So it's like it's nice to see. Hey, I just love like my sports games or I love my shooters or, you know, it's nice to have a good variety. Unfortunately, then you have so much more that you have to try and get your hands around and you usually don't have yeah, time and for it's it. It's tough, man. I think the the proliferation of every game demanding so much of your time yeah. is like a kind of a problem, problem. in video games. Mm-hmm. Like it's sort of like the it's sort of like the new issue is like, how do you keep up with destiny? I remember when um, the division came out. Mm. everyone was like how am i gonna play destiny and the yes. division yeah. and now that problem is like a million times Tough. worse like just playing destiny and the division sounds like paradise to me like that sounds like such an easy task because now i have to keep up with a million games that there's i have no chance of keeping up with and That's it's really cool. tough man picking your battles like i've had to skip i remember i used to really like to play like fifa when it would come out and now it's like i haven't played fifa in years it's just i don't have time yeah. for it there's so many yeah. games that i have to play absolutely so my secret has been the ones that really matter, I try to review them for someone. Like I want, mm. if if I can review them, like I reviewed Horizon Zero Dawn specifically oh, because nice. I knew if I didn't review it, I wouldn't have time to ever play it. So I found nice. a way to review it. I got through the game because you have to finish the game if you're reviewing it. Kinda. And then the ones that are less important are, mm-hmm. Yeah, some outlets have different policies on that, certainly. Uh, IGN, <laughs> makes, IGN makes you finish the game. That's one of the rules. That's why I had to spend 150 Respect. hours in Genshin. They Respect. make you finish I didn't know that. Wow. So, wow. That's yeah. A big, that's a big, yeah. Big yeah. You kind of agree to it. So like you have to pick your battles. Like they were like, Travis, do you want to review Genshin? And I did a bunch of research and I was like, <sighs> you know, sweating. <laughs> like, <laughs> I know. Just seeing the the next two weeks of my life passing by uh, and, and, you know, taking those battles. But if yeah. I didn't review it, I never would have played Genshin Impact. I just don't have time for it. Just don't have time. I just yeah. don't. So I'm, I'm glad I took the review. I was like, so when you take a project like that and you're like, say, this is going to be a big thing or something along the lines of if somebody's going to take Witcher, that's pretty yeah. giant undertaking as well. I mean, do you just like talk to your boss? I'm going to review the Witcher and you hide in an office for like two weeks, just like sitting there playing, making your notes to it. And is it just like that is your life for two weeks and you don't really worry about anything else? Or is your job still pulling you multiple other directions? I didn't know how dedicated you get when that something like that's on the line versus your day-to-day type stuff. Yeah, no, that's cute that you think that we even get to go into the office when we're working again. <laughs> when we get a game to review, we go, bye for three weeks. Really? I'm going to be at home playing this nice. every minute of every day. Because wow. typically we don't have a lot of lead time. We've got like one week, two weeks, and we have to hit embargo because yeah. – all of your content is meaningless if you don't get oh, it at absolutely. launch, right? Yep. Genshin, Genshin Impact was different because it's a live game that we weren't allowed to review it in advance. We had to play it after the game came out. And it mm. also wasn't really on anyone's radar. Like I had never yeah. heard of the game and then all of a sudden it sort of blew up. Um, and I think mm-hmm. the reason it wasn't on anybody's radar is because people were already playing it. It was like one of those early access yeah, games early access, where people we were playing chance. it for like yep. six months mm-hmm. before or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the, typically if you're reviewing a game like The Witcher and the person that's reviewing Cyberpunk, obviously, is yeah. like in a bunker in their house, basically. Oh, yeah. So they're, <laughs> they're, you know, they're probably not coming in unless, you know, they, and they'll take equipment home with them. Like we have a bunch of community like gaming rigs that you can pick up with a handle and just nice. like take, you know, they're like portable. So people nice. will take those for um for for to home for work or whatever other materials they need like a monitor recording equipment all that stuff and then and then come back when they're ready Mm -hmm. um and i will say just like the wor- the worst experience i've ever had is Mm -hmm. reviewing a vr game i Mm. i don't know if you guys are into (laughs) vr i've got i've not been i i've traditionally not been into vr (laughs) half-life alex changed my that's what you need to play that. on VR. Yeah, yeah. That's my game of the year. Bro. I just want to say a PSA right now, since I have this platform to do this. Oh, if you have cats, not man. played <laughs> Half Life Alex, <laughs> yeah. find a way to do it. Do I understand it. yeah. it's like basically impossible to play. Like one percent of the gaming community has played it or whatever. I should but probably play it. It. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it. it is legitimately. You know that how we all thought VR was going to change gaming, and that was yeah. all we were going to want. Like everybody mm-hmm. was just going to be in like those pods, you know, running down. Yeah, we all thought that was going to happen. Mm-hmm. That the opposite happened. It was like demos and kind of like uh, they were just like showcasing like, hey, isn't this a fun little whack-a-mole mm-hmm. game that you can play right. like Beat Saber? I could play Beat Saber for hours, but yeah. like, you know, to it's not the most, of, yeah. it's not the most impressive game. It doesn't make you right. feel like you've been transported to another world. Half-Life Alex legitimately meets 
that bar. Mm -hmm. Like it, it make it makes every other VR game look, look like a tech demo. It, wow. it, it, it is so immersive and so good and has so mm -hmm. much detail. Like, yeah, you, you have to play that let game. Me, anyway. If, no, no, no. Let, let no, me stop no, you because no. you That's actually you drop, making a good point. Shout out to E because he's definitely him and wife. You're definitely the beat saber champions. But back to your half. She, kicks, Alex my, point. she <laughs> kicks my butt. Like, she's a beast. I told amazing. you she's a pro. She, will, she could go yeah, pro. Her, that she's, and Tetris, and I lose it both. The woman is godly. I don't know how she's capable of these feats, but salute to some. But yeah. what I was gonna say is, it's funny you said that because um, on Iron Lord podcast we've had uh, Bill Stilwell on, and he was one responsible. For Xbox Back Compat, then he went to Project X Cloud. Now he's doing uh, f uh Facebook VR, and he's been on me about because I'm Captain Skeptical. I'm like, eh, this ain't gonna work, and eh, who's gonna buy this peripheral? And da 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 da. And he said the same thing you said about Half Life Out. He said until you experience it, he's it's so transformative. So now hearing what you're saying, I have to explain. Like I need to know what this is about so yeah it, it just it figured mm -hmm. out all the stuff that annoyed me about vr like for me i was gonna wow. my plan was to stay wow. away from vr until, until they got rid of the courts me too because that's me my too. concern you get to be tethered up yeah it yeah and so i was waiting for that to happen obviously oculus a rift is there and that's the mm -hmm. wireless one but it's not really it mm -hmm. doesn't it's not a premium gaming platform it's sort of like a downgraded version that you can mm -hmm. wear on your head right yep. um this game it figured everything out like you have gravity gloves so rather than walking over mm -hmm. to an item you point at it and you pull it toward you and then you mm -hmm. catch it right so mm -hmm. you can shoot a guy with your gun and then as mm -hmm. he's falling you can pull his gun yank it toward you grab it and start using it on some other people oh, uh, that's awesome uh, when, when you store items you just mm -hmm. pick them up and you let go oh. behind you like you're okay. putting it in your backpack. backpack. And so okay. if, you, if you run out of ammo, you eject your gun clip, you reach behind you, grab, pull it mm. out, and you're holding the ammo, put it in. Mm. It's so, like they just figured out all the stuff that you really want. And mm. it's so immersive. Like I got on all fours to look under the bed to get some mm. ammo because you're kind of like looking for supplies in the game, Style. right? And when, when I was done looking under the bed, I tried to put my hand on the bed to help me get back up. <laughs> yeah. That It's like that level where you're like, wait, that bed's not there. Like, yeah. this wow. is crazy, guys. Wow. Like, okay. Yeah. So that's a little play. Play. whenever that's I get a new graphics card, because I've got a 1080 Ti and it does pretty good in Beat Saber and stuff. But if I want to go mm. like deep on Alex, I think like that's, get that's the next level. Yeah, it's give me a 3080, call. something like that. Just push it to the max so it can be full detail. That would be, yeah. that sounds amazing, man. That. Yeah. That's one. Of, so I, I was gonna actually ask you. Half Life Two is put on this like crazy pedestal. Would yeah. you knock it off and put Alex up there instead? Now, so I would have not put Half Life Two on that pedestal necessarily I mean, that's to fair. begin with. Yeah. To be honest, like here's the thing: I respect the hell out of Half Life Two. When it came out, it did some stuff with like physics and in the in-game engine that has never been done before. But it's not been my cup of tea. I've never been really drawn to the story that much. Mm -hmm. I think that the main character is kind of bland. I've had issues with it that I think, you know, it just didn't connect with me as much. Mm -hmm. Half-Life Alex made me want to go back and play Half-Life 1 and 2. Like it, wow. it, it just, it really was that at that level that it was so good. So yeah, I'm a believer in, in VR now. Uh, oh. and, and could not recommend everyone enough Buy the index. It's the best VR headset out there. It's way okay. too expensive. It's a thousand bucks, yeah, but it's not, it's, it's it. Yes. Once you get it, here's the thing. Oculus has all the exclusives because they got that Facebook money, Right. but you can get a mod to play all of the Oculus games on index and they work well. So mm -hmm. all I'm saying is I don't own a, an Oculus and I've been playing lots of Oculus games. They're not great. The, I think the biggest problem with Half-Life Alex is once you've played it, again, going back to other VR you can't games, go back to like, yes. you, you these are play, not good. Yeah, you can Choice probably play Beat Saber for the experience, and then after that, you're like, nah. Yeah, super Hot is good mm, on VR. If you, yeah, 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 if you play Super Hot, that game on console, as soon as it was announced for VR, I was like, oh yeah, that would be better on VR, wouldn't it? And it mm -hmm. was. It's like, mm -hmm. And it's a different game, too, so it's not like you're replaying the old VR game. It's got Yo a game. separate storyline and up, everything. Man. Nice. Just yeah, cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, my point in all of this is that reviewing <laughs> VR games is terrible. Uh, oh. That's how we got started. That's there. Yeah. That's where we, that's where we were. Way to bring it up full yeah. circle. There you go. Full He's circle. He's a full professional. Circle. Yeah. He's if you've never crisis. had to put a helmet on and be in a virtual reality world for a couple hours a day, I do not recommend it. Mm, it gotcha. will make you, especially if it's, I reviewed No Man's Sky and I had to play a lot of VR for that. And that's one of those games where the frame rate is not, it's PSVR. The frame mm -hmm. rate is not fast enough. For yeah. your eyes and i was just throwing up like two times a day Ooh. it's like those 
you know you know when you throw up and it's like because you have a brain headache mm -hmm. it was uh -huh. one of those where like you're feeling so feverish you can't like mm. control your Ugh. body oh brutal man man the things we do to review a game yeah this wow, man gosh. out here putting in work and putting his body through literally <laughs> blood sweat and tears damn yeah, man. The, yeah, yeah, not blood yet, but I'm sure we'll get there. <laughs> I was like, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, my fingers are, I just can't feel them too much typing. The war review is too yeah. long. <laughs> no, nah, man, I mean, tremendous, man. I mean, like I said, just to, to see everything that you guys are doing over there. And then obviously, you know, the, the fire team chat changes is what a lot of people know you for, man. Like, how did that whole thing get together with, with Destin and now, uh, what you got, uh, Brian, right? Malcolm. Brian, yep. Brian Malkowitz, yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. And Paul Tassi is sort of like the unofficial yeah, like the full chair. Yeah. 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 He's like on, he's everywhere. That man. He's on every the show. Yeah. Shout out to Tassi. We just had him on yeah. too. He's great. Yeah, he was on, he's on, actually this, our episode of Fireteam Chat is going to start airing during this podcast or during this <laughs> recording. So uh, he's on this week's episode. Salute so, to yeah. Tassi. I tweeted yeah, out and sure he was like, all my worlds are colliding because like DCP, yeah. then this, yep. then that. Uh, he's, mm -hmm. he's something. Yeah, I need to get on DCP at some point. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so so yeah, Fireteam Chat has been around for a really long time, and it sort mm -hmm. of has had a revolving cast based on two things, people playing Destiny, because mm -hmm. you have to remember when Fireteam Chat started, it was sort of a first time that one yeah. video game had had its own had podcast, its own especially yeah. at IGN. Facts. At IGN, we'd had a podcast for Nintendo, Xbox, yep. PlayStation, and then one that was like a grab bag, right? Like yeah. that had been our... Our, our formula for a while and so it was really weird to have a podcast where it was like about one game but we were seeing our traffic for destiny was super high and you know the joke in the gaming community is people still play destiny at the time like and now obviously they still do that's like no question there mm -hmm, but yeah. at the time it was like yeah they're still playing destiny lots of people lots and we're getting people. a million plus views on every Ooh. article we publish about destiny Ooh. like this is a huge game yeah. right. um so he started that show and at the time so my backstory of how I got into reviewing video games was, you know, I, I had sort of done it as a hobby after college. I, I wrote freelance for different websites, anybody who would, who would pay me to, to review. And even then, sometimes for companies that wouldn't pay me to review, just, you know, pro bono uh, work. And mm -hmm. uh, but what my day job was, I, I work in advertising and I, I actually started working for uh, IGN's parent company, which is a company called Ziff Davis. They're like an yes. old school yep. uh, tech media conglomerate. They own like PC Mag and oh, yeah. every other online publisher you've ever heard of. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I just by chance, I got hired on the same day that Ziff Davis bought IGN. Mm -hmm. And they told us that we were moving into the IGN office. That was my first day at work. Wow. Like, uh, <laughs> and so I, I was a huge gamer. I had been writing reviews, not for IGN, obviously. Mm -hmm. I was writing for indie uh, outlets, but I had mm -hmm. been writing reviews for years. And I was just like, wow, I'm going to be hanging out with the IGN crew. That's nice. insane. Nice. And so, you know, we moved in and I was, sit I was working on the other side of the office as the IGN crew. Mm -hmm. And I would just start chit chatting with people in the office about games. And uh, through that became really good friends with a few people on the team. D James Duggan was one of my, you know, Duggan. buds I would have talked to all the time. Thug and Duggan. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Thug and Duggan. Uh, mm -hmm. Just talk about how big his arms are all day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the guns. <laughs> uh, you know, Finnegan and I bonded over our mutual oh, love that's of Halo. My guy um, right yeah, he, yeah. He's, he really him is times. into Halo. Um, CJ out, and I. Yeah, Continue. Finnegan's really cool. I, uh, yeah, really he, he works for uh, is it Hundred Thieves or something? I can't remember. What oh, works for now. okay, gotcha. Um, yep. mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and CJ and I. Uh, CJ is another guy who he worked on the IGN team, but he wasn't really on the the coverage team. He was a mm -hmm. video guy. Yep. Um, similar to to Brian, they they both worked in in video, and mm -hmm. and we all had this thing in common, which was that we played Destiny, and so. Uh, I would start talking to, to Destin and anybody else who's playing Destiny around the office. And they were like, mm -hmm. this guy knows a lot about Destiny. And, and I was sort of like, the joke was, I was like the unofficial member of our uh, team <laughs> chat because, because I didn't work for IGN, but yeah. I was always in the conversation. We would be talking about Destiny and then they'd be like, all right, bye, we're going to go record the show now. Like, and then uh -huh. I would go back to my office uh -huh. and start working on those Excel spreadsheets. You know, like that was my <laughs> my my life at the time. That kind um, of breaks my heart here and there. Yeah, it's, it's, like yeah. kid, yeah, it's like the kid that wasn't allowed to play. With the <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was they like picked I teams and you were to... the odd man out. Yeah. 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 yeah it, it, it was actually like that for a while for, for mm -hmm. a few people. It wasn't just mm -hmm. me. Like it was like, I think for the longest time it was Fran and I can't remember who was originally oh, wow. on the show but it wasn't CJ yeah, so wasn't. I think CJ was originally uh, 
That's it. Yes, thank yeah. you. And so was who? And he, he went to go work for, um, a, went for to Nintendo. Nintendo. Oh yeah, Otero. Works That's for my Nintendo. Guy. Actually, there's an ongoing joke in, in IGN that uh, like whoever becomes mm-hmm. the uh, host of the Nintendo podcast works for Nintendo like a year later because that has just been how that it has is. Been it happened, like, three times in a that row. has been the trajectory. That has been the trajectory. Shout out to my it's, boy. He yeah, from the boogie down, bro. He from my borough. So I respect, respect Jose, <laughs> oh, is man. He? Yeah, That's he great. from the Bronx, man. Yeah, shout out yeah. to him, man. Good guy. He, met super him nice a few guy. Times. Yeah, he was at the host of Nintendo Voice Chat, and then obviously, yeah, the Nintendo thing. But continue, for continue the Destiny yeah, story. Yeah, that, so I like um, this. CJ was kind of also in my camp. He was like the unofficial extra member of Fireteam Chat, where he was always on the conversation but never on the show because he wasn't known for being on on the show. And so, um, in my in my writing and my spare time for these indie outlets, I started to cover Destiny because I was the biggest Bungie fan in any of these outlets. Like I, that was just my specialty. And so I started covering Destiny a lot, doing reviews for different sites on Destiny content, writing articles, doing editorial pieces. And then when the Taken King came out, I got invited to go to uh, Bungie's headquarters for the first time, wow. just as me. And they were like, you can cover it and you can write for whatever outlet you want. We just want you to be there. And That's so I showed awesome. up and I, I can't remember who was there. I think it was Destin and he was like, Travis, you're here. What are you, <laughs> like, doing? What are you doing here? Like, yeah, man. You're, I must you're the, have you're the guy. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, and it happened years later too, when I went to go uh, cover it for PC and it was like a year or two later, it was like after Destiny 2 came out when they did the PC uh, mm-hmm. port. Yep, yep. And James Duggan saw me and he was like, wait, what? Don't you work in the IGN <laughs> office for like the yep. suits? Like you're part of the corporate group? Yeah. I was like, yeah. And I also covered Destiny. What up? <laughs> what up, though? What up, though? We here, oh, we crashed the party. What's up? <laughs> yeah, so I was sort of crashing the party working with IGN. And I remember at the Taken King event, they mm. did a crucible thing. I think the new mode was the, um, what's the one where you have to go and pick up the or- c- 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 kill confirmed, that mode that yeah, nobody uh, supremacy. liked? Supremacy. 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 Thank you. Yeah. I always forget the name. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Supremacy was coming out. So they had a whole Crucible segment. I was so good at Destiny Crucible at the time. Mm. I will not claim to be the world's greatest Flex. Crucible player now. I'm a talk Crucible that, main. I enjoy it. But I talk used that, to just be God tier. I was so that, good at Destiny. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. Humble Brett. I see you. <clears throat> I see you. Talk that, not talk. even humble. I was talk. very good. Tell them what you did. Tell them what you did. So I ruined Destin's footage. He was recording <laughs> for IGN and it was just a montage of him getting destroyed by me. Every time he spawned. Where's the footage, Destin? Where's the footage? We need to see this, please. I need to see this. <laughs> oh, that needs this, to be- is, this is the best part of the story. This is the best part of the story. I went there just as me to record footage, right? right. And I, I ruined Destin's cru- crucible footage so bad it was unsalvageable that he ended up using mine for the IGN footage <laughs> that they did on the coverage. Oh, so uh, he was amazing. just like, hey, so like, can I borrow a few clips? Cause like, <laughs> I'm not gonna put a video of me just getting spawn killed nonstop <laughs> with a sniper rifle, you know? And you know, I, I, I think I was using, uh, I was using classic. Icebreaker, is just this respawning like, ammo. Is this the oh first gosh, time this is like public out there? Are you outing them right now? Yeah. Or? I, I think this is the first time. No, actually, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm out. I'm actually, no, no, that's not true. We did it. We remember when they were doing the charity run a couple months ago. Yeah. For, mm-hmm. um, I think it was right when COVID started. Yep. We did a charity run and we were talking stories. And I think I told the story and oh, Destin okay. quickly like scooted by it and was like, anyway, next topic. Uh, <laughs> so, I was going to be like, so Travis, why aren't you on fire t- chat next week? What happened? Oh my God. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. No, that's actually an ongoing joke. Destin has fired me from fire team chat like every month since I started. He's like, you're off the show <laughs> every, every moment. So um, loose, but yeah, man. so that's how I got into, into Destiny coverage. And then years, years went by. I continued to work at IGN, but never write for them. And eventually someone, I think it was James Duggan, was like, dude, you should just write for us. Like, I know Mm. you have a day job, but like you should write for us freelance. And so I tried to do that. And corporate said, "Uh, we're not going to pay you two paychecks. Mm. We're not going to pay you your day job. And then also you get a check from IGN for writing for them. And so I quit. 
Why? Bro. I quit. Uh, I quit my job after eight oh. years, and I was like, "I'm gonna quit and uh, and and just work for IGN and write for for you guys." And oh. so I, you know, I gave up the the six figure uh, cushy job at, at the other side of the office so that I could write for them. And uh, wow, yeah, and ever since. Ever since then, I've been um, covering Destiny. I do all of Destin, Destiny's reviews now because Destin really hates doing reviews. He's a he. If you guys don't know Destin's job, he's like the director of video content yeah, strategy, he's a beast. and he all he also does a ton of previews oh, and cover it early access coverage. Multi media. He's really good. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, he's, he's really good at what everywhere. he does, but he hate he hates reviewing games, mm -hmm. and he had sort of been stuck with reviewing. Uh, destiny because he knew the most about it and so now i'm the review guy for destiny nice. and then he gets to just he gets to just focus on you know hosting fire team chat and having um, a million twitter followers and, and then i i, <laughs> I do the yeah no, but i want to back you up though review. i want to back you up because um i think that is a tremendous portion of your story that you kind of glossed over and i don't i don't want to minimize that because um at no, the end of the day me. like dude like to really to, to chase one's dream is one thing, but to go from a stable position where most people would say, okay, I can do this and be stable and be in one spot for the rest of my life, to kind of chase your dream and to do what you want to do and to make that sacrifice, dude, that's huge. So I got to gotta commit to not Not a lot of people have the gumption to do it. And um, it, it's truly respected because it comes from the heart, comes from the passion. And yeah, wish wish you more more success with that. That is amazing to hear something like that. You don't hear that often, so salute to you on that. that that's really great. Yeah, I mean, it took me long enough, mm -hmm. right? I worked in the same office as IGN for eight years, and <laughs> it took me that long to be like, I I should be on your side of the office. Yeah. Like, I don't know what the heck I'm doing over here. That's um, so you know, like that's so. I don't know. Petty's not petty's the right word, but it was like for parent company just to say, hey, we don't. Because, I mean, it's not like you're doing it. You're not like, you know, in your office spreadsheet on one screen, Destiny on the other. You're like, you're doing that on right. your own time as freelance. But they're right. like, you can't. And it's I don't know. Yeah. That's just I mean, they lost. Yeah. They lost a good one. It sounds they like it. So, one. so. You know, yeah. And I was I was high up. I was director of advertising operations. Wow. Like I was I was dude. doing wow. a ton of their a ton of their uh, stuff, not just for IGN, too, for like a lot of their wow. uh, properties. So. Um, they actually said it in the nicest way possible, which is they said like, oh yeah, it'll take some time for HR to look into this and then never, you know, mm -hmm. they did that whole thing where they yeah, just yeah, never yeah. got back to you. And, <laughs> and I, eventually you. I was like, you know what? Now you don't have a say because I'm, yeah, I'm going, now over I'm here. just going to go over here write reviews. What we want to do. That's what's up, oh, man. Yeah. Salute to you on that. Tremendous. You got anything more? Because I got one more question afterwards. You go one more right now. I was like, there's, there's more mm -hmm. stuff, but if you got one, sit and go for it. Because oh, yeah, I was like... Yeah. Yeah, no, the only question I was gonna, we got we gotta have some destiny fun now. Oh, um, please, unapologetic Titan Bane. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, right. that's the right answer. Thank you very much. Correct. F fix your facey. <laughs> we have had a lot of warlocks recently, and I have yeah, been do. outnumbered. Right. So I'm right. glad I got right. I got a friend here. It's so. been a lot I of mean, warlocks come through, but I got to shout out the, the Titan Mains. So tell me about that. Why? 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 You know, it's not. I didn't choose the Titan life. It chose me. You know, and, uh, <laughs> uh, the, uh, you know, Titan's a tough class to be because you, you know, as really? the champions of last year's um, contest to oh see who was the best, where we go. utterly dominated every single day. You know, you have a certain kind of authority. People kind of look up to you. Hunters are at the bottom going, I'm please, dead. like, you're such a... You're such a a, a a role model. Teach me your ways, and so it's just a lot of responsibility. That's what I'm saying. Wow, um, I am dead. No, you know, you know what it, you know what it was. Uh, <laughs> Titan slam that was. Lit. I'm actually. <laughs> did you did you start as Titan like yes. D one? So straight mm. up. Yeah. So okay. uh, my I tried all the classes during the beta on PS4. Mm -hmm. No, was it PS4? What console came out? Yeah, PS4. Yeah, it was the mm -hmm. beta for P the alpha for PS4. There was the one that was only exclusive, right? I knew I was going to get it on Xbox because all my Bungie friends are on Xbox. Wait, was but... it PS3 to PS4? Because there was no, no, it was not. No, it, it was, was not. PS4. So, That's eight years. Yeah, yeah. It came out 2014, which is a year after the. Because I always remember the 2013 is what people refer to Xbox's fall. Um, yeah. That yeah. that press conference. Uh, yeah, 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 <laughs> that's, yeah, that's how you so, shake yeah, it. It's a big that. deal. Yeah, yeah, that was a big deal. Pretty big deal. Yeah. Kind of changed the whole industry. Yikes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, 
Yeah, so uh, th- I played on the Alpha PS4 and I was like, Titans are basically Master Chief, right? Like this is a bungee game. They're like the ones who can take a bullet. They're bulkier. They don't back down. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I-, I like playing as hunters. I think they have some cool abilities. Warlocks mm-hmm. are you see yeah. they are Careful. they're also in the game and uh <laughs> oh this is you with him into this segment into this segment man the slander lost the disrespect lost he's so smooth with it and I'm gonna let it rock but yo you on fire right now you on fire talk that tight yeah. talk this is E's time I'm gonna let E have this he's been waiting you for a type my, of segment I, I have to you know what my yeah. favorite joke was from Destiny 1 is uh the remember in Destiny 1 if, if I'm correct, if I'm right, warlocks were the only class to not have an exotic boots. Yes. Which is a joke. Yep. And I yes. remember the joke, at least with my friends on Xbox, is whenever we'd get a new guy in the party who's a warlock, we'd be like, hey, you know why uh, warlocks don't have any exotic boots? And they go, why? And be like, they don't need boots since they're always getting carried. Oh. And I <laughs> still stand behind that because you remember back then it was it was the res the res that was yeah. what drew people to warlock is like oh I, I can die and come yeah, back yeah, yeah. it was right, a crutch it was a crutch self-res. yeah we, yeah, we, we, we were definitely crutch, a, so. a, a crutch of every night fall of rain yeah. in trials you know yeah. whenever that man went down you, 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 you know that your class is casual if Dej means your class oh speaking of Dej, right, now, see, see, we gonna stop now now I've now you're crucible too far. with Dej, and let me tell you he's not great. <laughs> We're not going to slander the great deed. Oh We're not going to slander my This is Floof absolutely gang. amazing. I... Floof gang in the chat, stand up. <laughs> this man is disrespectful. <laughs> and also, truth be known, your hero, your Lance Reddick, he, he is a warlock, man. <laughs> he is. He is. And Which it's is a shame because he voice acts the Titan. He was right. on an episode of Fireteam Chat. That's where he he revealed that he's a warlock main. And nope. on it, he said, once you go warlock, you don't go back. And That's that, right. coming from a titan, yes. oh man, that was a big yes. blow to our morale yes. that day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that, that, that one hurt a little bit. You pray into a false god. <laughs> I got to throw one back. takes off his armor and there's a rope sitting underneath and you're like, what the hell? <laughs> no, but salute today. Oh, real quick, while we have a fun one, Titans. I, yeah. This is a question I always ask E. I got to ask you though, this is, I, I, as, as much as we, we joke with the classes, you know, we yeah. got respect for the Titans. What's your favorite Titan NPC? Who's your favorite? Ooh, well, here's the fun part. You got, you got a pantheon there's... of Titans right now. That's true. I will favorite? have to go with Saint Fourteen, and I think Ooh. that's the obvious answer. To okay. me, Titans are the weakest sub uh, class in terms of the characters associated with them. Really? Zavala is like unapologetically yeah, the worst member of the Vanguard. I think Salute. we all Salute. we yeah, all we agree, all yeah. agree yeah. that he's not yeah, good. Like yeah. he's just yeah. shout out. He's shout just, out to mm-hmm. Yeah, he's super milk toast and uninteresting. Um, yes. But mm-hmm. yeah, I, Saint Fourteen always. I was a Defender Titan in D One. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of wish there was a dedicated subclass for that. Rather, it, you know how it kind of feels tacked on to the yeah. current uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, void subclass for Titans uh, because it was originally tacked on, and then they flushed mm-hmm. it out a little bit more. Um, but yeah, uh, I've always been a defender Titan. Sate fourteen mm-hmm. uh, really identify with him. I think he was the best season that season mm-hmm. where you got to season do that story. Dawn, I think that baby. was the that was the I best am, non non main expansion season in Destiny, I think. Um, I am the greatest Titan that ever lived. <laughs> yes, it was yeah. great. Yeah, seeing him come back and being able to save him and all that stuff yeah. was dope. And his helmet is like it's one of the only like oh, must iconic. have items in the game because the Titan bubbles kind of useless without, without the Saint Fourteen you, helmet. Oh, like yeah. if you yeah, if you're no, not you're, using that, like what are you doing? Like, yeah, if you're running you're, that subclass, that is the exotic to wear, it. and that like the yeah. imagery of that oh. exotic as well. Like over everything in the game, mm-hmm. you could show that to anybody who's ever played Destiny, and they know exactly what it is. Iconic. Exactly. I could show you helmet, any yeah. other like warlock helm, hunter helm. Yeah. They might know there's a few, but that one mm-hmm. zero oh, question. Yeah. It's fact. Yeah. It is 100% random, random side. Tight. Random side note, tit, uh, Titan Quetch. I gotta ask you guys, why does um my boy uh, doesn't get doesn't seem to get much love in Titan Lord? No one seems to like our Iron Lord brother, uh, Saladin. Oh yeah, yeah. Why you know Saladin what? doesn't I get never. I never heard anyone. Everyone says Shax, Save Fourteen. Yeah, nobody says Avala, but, but, nobody but says Avala, I, no yeah. one says yeah Saladin. I wonder why. Yeah, Sa- Saladin is one of the only um. 
one of the only titans who really has gotten a lot of backstory to him he basically got his own dlc right mm-hmm. which yep. which all of the other titans i have either always been in the game as a vendor or they got like a side thing like state 14 got a little side thing mm-hmm. but lord saladin was right in the center of of his own mainline expansion and i think that right. that hasn't really happened um right. i think the reason people forget about him is just because they turned him into a vendor and yeah. he's kind of not interesting anymore, yeah, and yeah, I kind of hate yeah. that because he was that. super dope. Wait, with bro, the rise the of Iron Fire Dropped. Axe. Oh my <sighs> god! Like, yeah, the Fire Axe when he did that, you've got him with Siva coming out, and that open the yeah, cinematic with him the, and the wolves. wolves. And of course, I have huskies, so the wolves. I was like, dude, you're like, you're like Ooh. my guy here. And then as you, you said it perfectly, he's like, now he's just a vendor who shows up every so often, probably too yeah. often. But I just wish yeah. they, yeah, I feel for him because I agree. I think when his introduction was so impactful. And I mean, look, Iron Lord podcast started because at the, the rise of Iron, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's how much. And I'm, a, I'm like, damn, I want to play Zavala. So it's interesting to see, yeah, his just being reduced to a vendor. And, and uh, you know, kind of, I'm just it's sad. Like, I want to see him involved more in, in the narrative, you know, at least yeah. especially when events happen. He doesn't really change his dialogue much, you know, and I just want to see him kind of react to what's going on in the world, you know, objectively. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be cool if they gave him something to do or maybe brought him back even for like a season pass, like make a story about his character or bring Siva back or something. But if you would have asked me who my favorite Titan was Mm -hmm. in Destiny, who actually shows up in the game Mm -hmm. in, you know, in in the year Rise of Iron was a thing, I would have said Lord Saladin, no hands down, because, you know, that's like that's like obvious because Shax is Shax is great. He's got I'm a Crucible main. So like for me, I spend a lot of time. I spend a lot of time with Shax. Um, but yeah, Saladin, Saladin's amazing. He's a really Ooh. good character that I wish they used better. This is yeah. a gripe I've had in destiny forever is like yeah. all these great characters, all these oh. great concepts for stories oh. and they don't use any of it. They just oh. let it yeah. just sit on the shelf. I mean, yeah. you got, yeah. I mean, and Dakota just said, I Cora hasn't had a look in quite a long mm-hmm. time and you've got or so use. many dangling threads. You've got the Aldrin storyline of which we're like, is that, is that actually going to happen? There's like rumors and questions and is this icon so. actually going to be a thing and paul tassie's mm-hmm. like kind of nailing it down that it actually might be fairly close but mm-hmm. either way you look at all of these things that we've been through there's so much that's still as you said mm-hmm. unused stories that are so set up with a lot of potential to them yeah we have a lot of un like right now we've got mm-hmm. whatever the heck's going on with sabbath then we've got uh the darkness plot line and the fact that they're coming which in the shadow keep ending where you meet the darkness and it looks like you and all that stuff spoiler yeah. alert if you're yep. listening yeah, to a so destiny well. podcast you're and somehow you're late, to, destiny. Year you're a little late yeah. to that raid come on now. yeah um <laughs> yeah the uh so you know that that whole thing is a that you like you got it right the old Sov is a loose plot line thread um mm-hmm. even even stuff like the curse in the dreaming city that oh, is repeating yes. like, like did we solve yeah. that like yeah. what like, is going on what's going on you know? yeah. i mean i keep Oops. wondering so. that one specifically it was like because as soon as they said what destinations were leaving and what's mm. staying the fact that the dreaming city is still staying staying we have yeah. savathun coming there might be i'm my hunch is like has been always like if they're gonna like rehash a destination like they did with Cosmodrome, but then mm-hmm. bring a new one in to give you like two new destinations for the expansions, but not make one quite as much work. Mm-hmm. Like Dreadnought with like a Dreaming City tie-in or something like that to get a little bit of story through there. And if Savathun comes and that's the like the Savathun, you know, death battery that's going on and all that stuff, like I'm mm-hmm. I'm with you as like I've spent way too much time in the Shattered Throne just because like I worked on dungeon videos and stuff in there for me, and I'm just like at some point, I feel really sorry for these people every week. And I did Ascendant videos for like a year, the Ascendant challenges. Like every time mm-hmm. I'd go talk to Petra, I'm like, here we are again. Like, and I'm just like, <laughs> I feel sorry for an yeah. entire year. I'm like, and it hasn't changed for like, Jeez. we're going yeah. into year four. And I'm going, I don't think you're going to get any better news yet. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's really I like, think, that's weird. Mm-hmm. I think if they do redo the Dreaming City, they'll probably just like, keep the map the same same and then they'll add like a throne world version of it because you know mm. we're definitely going to go into savathun's throne world like that has been sort of hinted at in the lore and the fact that we're getting pulled into an unknown throne world every week in this mm-hmm. uh this season of arrivals that sort of thing yeah. so I, I think we're probably going to end up i would be interested to see if we'll get a throne world as a destination and destiny Ooh. like something on your map that you go to mm-hmm. uh it'll probably most more likely than that be like the raid and maybe it'll be in strikes and that sort of stuff but do, do you do you guys happen to know whose throne world we're going into in like 
the strike that's in the Dreaming City and stuff like that. Like, oh, the corrupted I really, strike. Yeah, the corrupted strike. Like, mm. I don't really know who's. I know that in Shattered Throne, you're entering Mara Sov's throne world, right? right? And it's all destroyed. King's Fall, you enter Oryx's throne world. Right. I'm not really sure whose throne world we're in in the Dreaming City, but I assume that it's Savathun. E, we got to so. call Bife back. We have to have Bife back on again. Yeah, no, be like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, we need to call up the Bife. Yeah, we got to call Bife. That's a Bife call. Yeah, Mylan yeah. Games, we're going to have to call him, get, get him in. Because, yeah, yeah I'm, or, I am not sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a good uh, question. A question. I, yeah. yeah, or somebody in the comments I see said the Ascendant Plane. I'm not sure if the Ascendant Plane is just like a generic catch all for like throne worlds, but yeah. to me, they seem an awful lot similar, the two, no, they right? Yeah, they, I mean, they all look like the upside down worlds. from Stranger Things. So, yeah, all kind of right. yeah. and that was like it. perfectly timed. So, that's like, that's all you can think of, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. like they always mention the Ascendant plane and you do the Ascendant challenges. But yeah, it's like they have that exact same look when you go to Marasov's for Shattered Throne. I'm like, we're talking the same very dark, drab, black and white, you know, monochrome look throughout the entire thing. Mm-hmm. And yet, very specifically, Marasov's throne with all of that going on. Sabathun mm-hmm. yeah. will play at some point, but Dreaming City, the Ascendant plane always seems weird. And you're always talking to what's the little floating Toland. I don't know what he's doing yeah. there either. Maybe it's his. <laughs> yeah, Toland. That's another one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's like his. That's like you know what it is. Toland is just uh, uh, Osiris instead Easy. of being in the Infinite Forest. He's in the Ascendant plane, and it's like the exact same arc. It's like, hey, mm-hmm. there once was this cool person, and now he <laughs> is in this other world, and he focuses Dual. on on mm-hmm. just that. It's like the same thing. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Quick question. Um, Mm -hmm. Just curious. Uh, Top three raids for all of the franchise. Oh, we going there. See that man's okay, plaques in the back. Shoulder real quick. Let's, you see that man's plaques in <laughs> oh, the back. Like you need to plaques. like check. Hold on, be like, what are those raids yeah. called? Like you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll give, I, 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 so this is. Let's just get this out of the way because I don't think it's gonna surprise anyone. But my three favorite raids are all in Destiny One. Mm. Um, I, I, yeah, I mean, Destiny mm. Two is a great game. I think the shooting mechanics are awesome, uh, better than Destiny One. But uh, mm-hmm. they put a lot of time in those raids with the exception of Crota's end, which I kind of think is bad. I think it's bad, um, but that's okay. He, you're that's winning okay. back. We're, we're you're winning here. You're winning you're Cognito back, back right now. You're back yeah, home, right. baby. We forgive the tight slander now. Let's go. Talk that, so, talk, hey, talk that raid I, ranking. I love, I love Hunters and Warlocks, but I'm duty bound as a Titan to, <laughs> to give them flack anytime I can. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I res- so I, I, I think um, <laughs> in order, Vault of Glass, Mm. Two. Ooh, you're this thinking is tough because Wrath of the Machine and King's two. Fall are both so good. Um, I'll bring it home. Yeah, I'm going to go with King's Fall and Wrath of the Machines because, okay. and that's in order of their release minus Crota's End, which is sort mm-hmm. of like a, a, a middle one. But mm-hmm. um, for me, Vault of Glass, it it's it kind of it changed so much in the gaming world. I remember Destiny came out and it kind of it kind of went over like a wet fart was my memory of it. Like it, nobody really cared except for the people who really were getting into it for some reason. But mm-hmm. at the beginning it was sort of, but I remember a month later, it was a full month before Vault of Glass came out. Talk to And him. when that happened, that game changed. Talk it to was him. unreal. And, and mm-hmm. I remember I stayed up all night the night that it came out and I was playing it all through the weekend with this group of people that I'm still friends with on Xbox Live. Sometimes I talk to them like, you always remember who you did like Vault of Glass with. Bro. Like Crota's End, maybe not, but Vault of Glass, like you remember those people. You remember who you were Salute with. the Crota End yeah. slander. I love it. Continue. So, um, yeah. I mean, it, and it was great. Obviously, it had some bugs and people figured out, you know, you can stand far away and just use Icebreaker to kill the first boss or even just push it off the edge and you can mm-hmm. push the final boss off the edge. But it took people a while to figure that out because mm-hmm. we were new to raids. We hadn't kind of yeah. figured out all the tricks yet, right? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, Crota, I remember the first weekend we were playing that raid, we were already pulling out our Ethernet cables. So I just remember that's, mm-hmm. you know, that's my recollection of, of those uh, those. Mm-hmm. Shout kind out. of uh, th- th- those those raids, but yeah, mm-hmm. Vault of Glass was was just really well designed. Mm-hmm. Um, 
It has one of my favorite lines in Destiny, which is "Guardians make their own fate." Ooh, uh, in the nice. in, I mean that 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 little that flavor text so, I think they call it so good. is such a satisfying. So good. I don't know why they don't put that in more because it's yeah. now it's sort of used as like an information feed, like you're yes. you know getting updates from like CNN. Like it's mm-hmm. like put some stuff in there, you know. Like <laughs> I want to see some <laughs> cool uh, nuggets of information. Yeah, um, absolutely. But yeah, Love that that was really cool, and then. Um, you know, Crota's End, just they added everybody was a bullet sponge and every encounter was just, can you kill a lot of things that have a lot of health? That was my main was problem dope, though. With In it. defense of Crota, I like, I like the, the dive down. It was kind of that's cinematic. true. It's kind of cool. Oh, like, yeah, that's true. The, like, the very special, beginning. Yeah. The very beginning is kind of cool. The very beginning is cool, and the very end and how you kill the boss is cool. Yeah. But yes. just my recollection of that whole and the bridge music. encounter. The music. And the, oh, yeah, legit. the music, too. Yeah. The music well, legit when get you get the sword. Away. The music's go. good in everything of yeah. Destiny. Like, it's just, like, every single track is a banger in destiny i oh, we, yeah me, 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 i was i was at bungie hq with a bunch of outlets and we were just talking for like two hours about mm-hmm. all of the good music in destiny and what our I'm, favorite yeah, songs were seriously. and all this stuff and yeah you, you can get into a rabbit hole that alone but uh mm-hmm. yeah um for me king's fall the reason that wins over wrath of the machines is purely because of the lore and the final mm-hmm. boss fight Mm. Take, Oryx was the best villain Destiny's ever had. Factual. And Factual. my biggest problem with Destiny is that they've not had one villain that we're fighting against this whole time. They create a villain and we know him for about six hours before yeah. we kill whoever oh, that was. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. That's yeah. Shout, shout out to the Shout out to the worm god we killed in a strike in one mile. Like, shout out. Yeah, right? shout like, out yeah, to yeah, exactly. We killed, we killed in a strike. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing is that they, they kind of, and I think it's a retcon. I don't think they had this plan from the beginning, but they brought Zol back and were like, oh, we he tricked you into killing him. Isn't mm-hmm. Destiny a good game? Uh, you know, and, and that sort of thing. But mm-hmm. because you remember they brought him back. Oh, yeah. The whisper. secret, yeah, the, whisper, yeah, whisper. Yeah, mm-hmm. so and they were like, oh yeah, maybe maybe he was just toying with us the whole time. But <laughs> I kind of hate that we haven't had an overarching villain. What I what I thought I reviewed Destiny Two Vanilla mm-hmm. as well. And what I was hoping is that you know Destiny Two would last three years or however long it lasted, just mm-hmm. like Destiny One did, and that Gaul would be the villain for all of those years. Yeah, and maybe we would do Gaul different was, stuff. Gaul was cool. But, he was cool and he had yeah. a lot of potential, but his biggest yeah. problem was that they turned him into like Goku in the last <laughs> yeah. storm oh my God. Yes. and then he got killed. And it's just like, what the hell, man? Like it mm-hmm. could have been dope. So mm-hmm. I mean, um, and chat's basically saying like the only other one right now is Savathun, but it's like, yeah. she doesn't feel real. Yeah. She, fe- yeah. she feels like, um, you know how like in, <laughs> you know how like there's some properties where like, you only know about characters from like the uh, expanded universe comic book yes. or like the, yes. the novel that nobody knew about. Like, yep. you know, Buck, Bucky from, from uh, Halo, like, you yep. know about him because he was in, you know, ODST mm-hmm. or whatever. Facts. Uh, stuff like that. It, she, she feels like she's part of the expanded universe. Yes. And, you know, she's this big bad villain who we've never seen. Never we, seen. we, you only know anything about her if you've read the grimoire and are a nerd like me. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's been alluded to forever, but I would guarantee you that ninety nine point seven percent of the Destiny community has no idea who Sabathun is. Yeah. Uh, and and you know they would probably be like, oh yeah, their name was in a strike or something mm-hmm. like that. Yep. Like that's the that's the farthest. Yeah, thing. it's yeah. like her that the name Sabathun has been on like enemies, and you had Sabathun's oh, yeah. song and Sabathun's all those pieces, song, but. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I mean, Prescott said it. She's like Sauron of Lord of the Rings. It's like it's yes. the the <laughs> right. far the far away far threat away. that in theory yeah. is terrifying in potential, but we don't have a clue because we've never seen it in action. Shout and then again, Sauron's, like, mm-hmm. Sauron's ahead. actually being nice to it because Sauron, at least you get to see him kick ass in the opening scene. Right. You know? Yeah, you get to see a little lot. bit. True. Sabathun, it, it would be like if, if at the beginning of Lord of the Rings, you get to see like Sauron's brother kill a bunch of people <laughs> and then they spend the rest of the movie talking about yeah. Sauron. <laughs> Yo, know? that's good. That's um, actually good though. That's actually yeah. accurate. That's actually accurate yeah. with Oryx. Yeah. Salute. Yeah. You, you see Oryx be badass and then you, uh, you know, S- S- Sabathun is just Loki. Uh, you know it's the was, trickster though? god will, it, that we never get to see. In defense yeah. of, of Sabathun, and you, you're absolutely right. I mean, I, I, they haven't done enough, I felt, to truly build a shout out to Gam in the chat, riding for Savathun. It's gonna be interesting, satisfied when we finally get her in Witch Queen, though. They've been building her since taking it. True. Yeah. What was the strike, E, that they brought in this last one? I, I don't know if it was a PlayStation exclusive that they brought it Festering on the PC. Core? Festering, Festering Core. Core. I felt I learned more. When Eris jumped in on the transmission 
and was really talking about her deceptive nature and the things that she tries to do to manipulate things and how we wouldn't know her move. Like I felt and that we're losing kind of, that strike. Yeah, yeah I'm like yeah, that. Yeah, that yeah. one had a pretty short lifespan. Yeah. That's sad. Yeah, it did. Yeah, but, I remember. I yeah. So that's that's my problem. Is like Destiny is is. I say this all the time on Fireteam Chat. It's one of the best and 10 of the worst games I've ever played. Um, and You're not wrong. <laughs> You're not wrong. And, like the, the problem with Destiny storytelling is that is that they have so much good material to work with and they don't use a whole lot of it. And Sabathun is absolutely one of those areas, in my opinion, where they can mm -hmm. do a better job. And I'm really hoping that over this next year, mm -hmm. they'll take some time to sort of carve her out because I have a feeling she's going to die in a year, right? Like she's mm -hmm. going to die in the raid or at the end of the story in a year mm -hmm. and that'll be over. And maybe they're wrapping up Destiny because the year after that is Lightfall and and who knows, you know, that's what, what that's going to mean mm -hmm. for the Destiny world. Right. Um, but... I just, I just hope we get payoff. I really hope there's a plan. I feel like there isn't a plan in Destiny mm. storytelling and they're kind of just winging it. Uh, and they do a really good job if they are winging it. But right. I just, this is one of those things where you almost have to have like, it's like that 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 scene in uh, The Last Crusade where Indy, Indy has to uh, take that first step yep. uh, yeah, the, uh, across yeah, the platform, absolutely. right? Absolutely. It's a leap of faith of like, God, I hope that I'm not wasting these six right. years I've been playing Destiny and learning so much about it through the grimoire. And I really hope that there's some payoff here. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, I mean, Bungie's a company. If there's any company to rise to the challenge, mm -hmm. it's Bungie. Oh, it's Bungie. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it that's one. Fun. That's the thing is like, I'm with you. It's like we have Witch Queen setting up potential of Savathun. You have Lightfall and we've got these like darkness powers coming on. I'm like. You're putting a whole lot of cool stuff in all of our heads that could be real. Please do something like you have Marasov, like she's queen with her own ascendant realm as well of like her brother who's here. You got Petra, like just that section alone between Mara, Eris and mm -hmm. Savathun with what's going on with those three in that weird triangle. Mm -hmm. And then you've also got, why well, can't I remember the single sock lady? Emissary. Oh, emissary! Yeah, the oh, emissary yeah, yeah. and all of the nine, <laughs> like the nine. And, uh, Jesus, she, he he got me on the same, the like the one side, or yeah, like she's like side. yeah, it's like she's got one <laughs> different color foot. So. Uh -huh. Facts. That's so, funny. So yeah, you said, the, I get the, the, I was the like, nine continue. or another. I was gonna say the nine or another thing where like they're in the game explicitly, mm -hmm. and I most people have no idea what they are. I know because I've looked up the grimoire and done a bunch of research because I was like, what the hell are the nine? And then mm -hmm. they did that one, they did the uh, the uh, dungeon recently. Right, right. And the whole thing was, you know, finally figure out who the nine are. And mm -hmm. you have no idea who the nine are still. Zero. Or the yeah. Zero. So yeah, Zero. it yeah. didn't make any sense. So just yeah. real quick, just to recap, we're going to finish up the raid thing. Um, Again, so you got Vault, we got King. Oh, shout out to Ficardo who actually made a good point about Vault. He was like, Strongly believes Destiny wouldn't be what Destiny was if that experience didn't happen. And I actually tend 100%. to agree with them. One hundred percent agree with them. Yeah, that's, I, I was that'll give any, Yeah, it's like that did because yeah. Destiny was like, "What are we doing?" And then, mm -hmm. bam, that like yeah. changed Remember the idea Forever for everybody. Remember Twenty Nines? Oh, so much because I was waiting on my home. I, I I was a Forever Twenty Nine. I never got the boots for the Titan mm. from that raid. Never mm. ever in Destiny, and I did it every wow. single week. Wow. Uh, you know, I was one of those guys where the drop rate just didn't work out for me, but. uh mm. The that that whole idea of being a Forever Twenty Nine and reaching max power and the mm -hmm. the chase for it and the aspiration that mm -hmm. wouldn't exist without Vault of Glass because that end game the end game was Vault of Glass yep. in the at the end of the day back then there was no trials there were no other raids that was the end game nice. so yeah that that was that King's Fall for me that raid is sort of mediocre it but the thing I it's mediocre in parts mm -hmm. but the on the whole, it's really solid. It's all boss fights. It's like yeah. boss rush. You know, yeah. you're just fighting boss after boss, boss and they all boss. look cool. Yes. And they all have unique. They all have dope armor. And yes. I mean, the, the ogre is whatever. But, you know, <laughs> they all, at least the ogre looks cool. He's got that cool yeah. spawn animation. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. um, but for me, I day one that raid. I worked so hard to be one of the first people to beat that raid. We're going to have that discussion, too. Uh, day one. <laughs> Later, yeah, <continue. laughs> I know you're gonna say the nine. There's celestial bodies, it, it, dude. It does. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Well, shout out to the King King King's fall mm. uh, is uh, that when that that moment where he came up. Oh, the final boss. So epic. That was like okay. 
Mm -hmm. this is awesome and it made the entire journey worth it because i was banging my head against the wall for like 14 hours before we got to the final boss encounter Mm -hmm. where oryx actually came out and i just remember i hadn't i had not been watching other streams i had not been cheating at all and when i saw it Mm -hmm. i i just stood there for the entire first wipe i was just standing there looking at him like what the hell and one of my teammates just he, you could hear him take off his headset and screaming from another room. Like he was just <laughs> running around his house, like, ah, you know, yeah. you just hear that in the background. You, that was great. And then you gotta say he's the Wrath best of the Boss. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so that's, that's number two for me. And then Wrath, Wrath of the Machines is number three because it has the single best encounter in any raid, which, which one? is uh, the uh, Siege Engine. Siege Engine! Shout out! Siege Yo, no one ever talks about Siege like, Engine. That, is, that might Siege, be a first. Yeah. Siege Engine is the best encounter in any raid. It talk is super fun. It's very yes. unique. Very it, unique. It is unlike any other Anything. encounter in any raid. Absolutely. And it has the world's best ending, which is you just ride it to hell. Like you yeah. take it <laughs> over so and then you just sort of... It's just... It's so metal, man. It's such a, <laughs> such a good encounter. I remember... Getting to that point on day one, I day one mm. to that raid as well. And mm-hmm. getting up to that point was really demoralizing. It was like, <laughs> oh, you know. I every, think that's about every... where I got to as well. And mm-hmm. and it was yes. just like, it was totally different so for me different. as well. It was like yeah. first time was just like, the hell are what's, we doing? What's my man name? What's my yeah. man? Sh- shout out to Meeksis, the one that always the he always messes it up the the the, the falling that does so you gotta you gotta get him before oh, he does yep. something with the injured parts and all that stuff. It'll be like Meeksis did this, and I'm like, what? <laughs> the game always tells you in the corner. I'm like, shout out to him. But yeah, that that was that was a unique encounter. And the engine yeah. parts and then move it around. Yeah, uh, very, very Yeah, just cool. the, the fact that you take over the boss and then you like use it to kill all the bad guys and then drive it off a cliff. Like mm-hmm. I, I remember when we got through that encounter, it, mm-hmm. it reinvigorated all of us. Like the whole party was sort of getting fatigued. And we got to that point and we were just like, all right, that was so cool. Mm-hmm. Not only am I ready for the rest of this raid, but I can't wait to do it again. I can't Absolutely. wait to play that again now, not having to figure out how to do it. That was just so great. Absolutely. Salute, man. Tremendous history, man. The boy's certified, E. The boy's certified, man. Oh, yeah. No, that's <laughs> that's pretty epic right there. I, mean, I think, he's all... qualified. I think he's qualified to review Destiny 5. Oh, yeah? You think so? <sighs> a little bit. I'll give him, we'll I'll give him, the, I'll give him the check mark of uh, compliance there. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Doing well. Doing quite well. So, what's going on in the world of Destiny, man? Nothing, nothing major. You know, not, no. Uh, next gen, for starters, because, you know... Speaking of a guy who works in the games industry now, this man is potentially going to dodge some of it, but be around the chaos that is the next gen launch. That's right. Uh, we got a little little preview before, but we actually finally got confirmation of what we're going to get in the next generation of Destiny. So for Series X and PS5, we've got 4K60, which everybody's been waiting on. And I think more important, people could have played playing on a peanut or like with you know like blinders on but they got the field of view slider i think that's probably what everybody is the most excited about they could be like you can give me 1440 240 hertz i don't care but give me the field of view i think is what everybody on console has been waiting for faster load times cross gen all that stuff's good series s is going to be 1080 60 same stuff with field of view i think the field of view is the one that i've seen more people lose their mind about so curious me too you guys, same here if you are Pumped, excited. Do you think, are they missing anything for next gen? What are you guys looking at? Uh, I think uh, this is awesome. I I sort of wonder if some of the consoles could do more than 60 FPS, especially if they were in a performance mode where they were 1080. I would like to be able to make that decision. I mean, I think Destin plays in 1440 or 1080 or something. He does not play in 4K so that he can play at 120 fps um i think console players should be able to have that option now that they uh have the power to do it you know before it was sort of like they're just trying to get to 30 you know they're (laughs) they don't have the privilege to (laughs) like low res you know you're not going to lower it to 720p so that you can run a few extra frames Uh, Mm -hmm. but yeah so so i i think that that would be great but i think the real like the lead that is being buried in all of this is like how good it's going to be for people who buy the series s because honestly having playing in 1080p i think it's something like 70 percent of gamers do not have a 4k display actual and the fact that you can play at 1080p at 60 fps with fov sliders which is like pretty much in the past only been a pc PC. specific feature Mm -hmm. ever 
Um, I think it's great, man. I, mm-hmm. For 300 bucks, you can play a really, really high-end version of Destiny, and you could probably mm-hmm. max out the TV that you have because realistically, monitors running more than 60 fps is pretty rare right or it's pretty pretty hard to get tvs it's like unheard of like Mm -hmm. the tvs that can do 4k 120 fps are like few and far between uh unless you right now (laughs) yeah there's like three tvs ever and i have one he has has one yeah Yeah. so (laughs) you've got one too yeah you got that lgc cognito does yeah Mm -hmm. nice just joined the club just joined the club amazing Mm -hmm. yeah i mean if if, travel you finish i don't know if you're still going that's well, it. I'm done. I, oh, I'm okay. excited for this. I think it's great. FOV slider is absolutely the biggest, uh, the biggest of the, the things to be happy about. Yeah, man. This is this is tremendous. I mean, let's just get it. I'm gonna get the negative out the way first. You know, um, waking up obviously the vampire to the news. The first thing that hit me <laughs> was December eighth. <laughs> so you know, for me, I show show I'll give you the history. Is that you know, as a console guy, that's just my history. I'm, I'm you know. Born and raised, I'm a controller guy. You know what I'm saying? That's just what I do. But the thing that hit me, I was, I had it all mentally prepared. Travis. I was like, yo, Series X drops, Beyond Light. Everyone's laughing at the, the Xbox community. Like, oh, Xbox doesn't have any exclusives. I'm like, Destiny's there at launch. I'm, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? On so Game Pass. From a, I'm like, oh, they, this. it was like the coronation. Cognito's coming home. I, I'm telling my whole Xbox community. And then you, you, and then you slipped 10th. on the banana peel on the way up. Yeah, I'm like, November 10th, <laughs> we there, baby. Because I told my clan, I was like, look, you know, when E showed me, tempted me to the darkness last <laughs> Yeah. I'm, not sorry. I'm not that sorry. That evil PC life. I was corrupted. Those frames, that field of view. I was like, I'm not doing 30 frames ever again. No. <laughs> I, I, I just can't. And it, it just like playing it is like playing in molasses. <laughs> and I just like, I can't do it. So I've been over here on PC. You know, 80% of my clan still on Xbox. I formed, you know, the clan still exists, but there's about 20% of us over here. So this was my excited time. So to see it, the December 8th did hit me. I was like, damn, I got to wait a month. And I was really looking forward to showcasing the Series X and my TV and all the other stuff. But when I read the details and I saw Field of View, I'll be real with you, E, I never thought they would do it. Because in my opinion. I was like, I wasn't sure. <laughs> console guys have always been and i don't mean disrespectful they've always been babied like it's always like we're not going to give you these extensive features we don't want to confuse you you know last gen we got a frame rate and a performance mode which was big for the next generation console refreshes but i never knew that would happen because my thing is i was willing to accept no field i was telling my guys look don't get your hopes up too high for fov you know, look, we're going to have NVMe drives. You're going to be loaded into the strikes and the raids all fast. You ain't going to be in orbit chilling. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have that 60 frames. You're going to understand why I left you. <laughs> Once you see 60, you're going to yeah. understand. You're going to be like, oh, my God, this is a different game. Cog, I get it now. I get it. But to have the FOV, there's so many now of my PC guys. That were like, yo, I'd come over there, but if there ain't no FOV, Cog, I'm not going to the Xbox. You know what I'm saying over there? So to see this, this is cool. And to me, that's worth the wait. That's worth the wait. I'm willing to say, so yes, uh, Clan, I'll be on PC for another month. <laughs> I'll be here. You know what I'm saying? I'll be rooting you guys on. You know what I'm saying? But once y'all bring that 60 and that FOV, bam, your man right back home. So, but this was this was tremendous. Salute to them. And like you said, uh, Travis, um, Series S, man. I mean, 1080p 60, like, like you said, a lot of people don't have 4K monitors. You know, for $300, you're getting the game, Game Pass, and they shout out to PlayStation 5, 4K 60 too. So everything's going, they're getting FOV, everything is lit. Like, this is such a cool thing. And then obviously, cross generational, the saves, you know, Xbox, yeah. playing Xbox guy, that's going to be big. You know, I, 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 I just, have some questions yeah. about the cross generational mm-hmm. thing, that's which cool. are. You know, right now I have an Xbox One X and when mm-hmm. I load into a strike, I hang out for 90 seconds while I wait for the guy with an OG Xbox yep. One to load in. And I know on PC, you have to do that as well. If people have older CPUs, it takes them long, or no, it's drives, right? Yeah, yeah it usually takes, like whatever old, it is. Old drives, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. old drives that takes them a while to get in. Um, then mm-hmm. I, I'm wondering how wide that gap's gonna get. If you're on a Series <laughs> X versus an OG Xbox, like that is a very different experience. And you're like, did you I see that see... guy? I literally can't see him. <laughs> He's not even on <laughs> <Yeah>. screen. 
<laughs> for matchmaking, there has to be, I hope, there has to be some priority given to people that are on the next-gen platform versus the old one because oh, I see that being really uh, troubling if, if we're doing that. And then also having 60 FPS in Crucible over somebody who's on the Xbox One, that's going to be nasty because I don't know anybody on PC who plays Crucible at a any competitive, com- competitive level who has a 30 FPS uh, computer running running 30 less fewer than 60 frames that's pretty yeah. rare uh so i can see that being and uh, thankfully it works in my favor i mean i've got my series x pre-ordered it's going to be here Ooh. year one so i'm definitely going to be dunking on some people who are yes. in 30 fps <laughs> but <laughs> it just seems pretty toxic i was gonna say real quick and I, I'll, I'll let you go is that I'm actually surprised another reason why too is that again console is such a controlled space Right. And one of the biggest fears that we got last gen, we were like, would these mid generation refreshes even allow that frame disparity if t- from a competitive standpoint? And I remember there were times where Bungie was questioned, Microsoft was questioned, a lot of people were questioned, like, would you allow a 60 frames guy go against a 30 frames guy and all that stuff? So to me, this is them full on. Like, I was surprised how bold this move is. Like, yo, we're allowing all these different ecosystems to intermingle and hey, it is what it is kind of thing. So selfishly, I don't mind because I already know what side I'm on, but it is it is a departure from the safe nature of console. Consoles traditionally tend to shy away from this. And this is them really kind of embracing, especially with FOV. But yeah, I'm gonna let you know, I know you got last stuff. No, I mean, that's topic. like a huge piece of this is you've got mm-hmm. people that are used to this on PC because mm-hmm. I mean, you've got people that are buying 360 Hertz monitors mm-hmm. for 1080p games and stuff like CSGO yeah. versus like, Hey, what's CSGO? Let me turn it on. And they like can't even blink fast enough to get killed. So PC is used to that. And as you said, console has been console is you buy a typically set package and not a whole lot of options in there. Now, we've, as you said, the next generation gives you the switch of performance and things. Now they are going to have potentially like three modes. I think for me, one of the biggest ones for the two powerful consoles, Series X and PS5, they're both going to be powerful. They're doing 4K 60. I would love to have seen them do like either 1440 120 facts, or 120 facts, like because facts. there's some people who are like hey if i can buy a monitor and it's like it's a kid in a room but maybe he can is able to get like 1080p monitors at high refresh rates they're not that expensive at this point so the entry at that level isn't terrible like you could try and go 4k mm-hmm. 144 hertz you may as well buy a new car but <laughs> like there's some like you may as well buy a tv honestly with some of those mm-hmm. it's almost the same price but if you're going to go 1080p and you're like i just want the fast refresh rate it'd mm-hmm. be nice to be like hey i got the ps5 Freach. but i can go you know 144 Freach. hertz or whatever Freach. that's the piece that i would like to see them go between Freach. and give the option for i don't know if that's later to give more resolution choices but i mean mm-hmm. the field of view is a big one but the the frame rate i think some people would Freach. happily be like i don't need to see 4k Freach. if i can get the faster mm-hmm. refresh rate there's a lot of people who would love to see that one and then as you also said as well travis you said like the loading times you're going you know, old Xbox One, P- regular PS4 spinning hard drive to NVMe next gen. What is, what is, and then also as like the field of view slider. And as literally, I'm like, hey, I can see this much. There's a guy over here who, where? And the guy's like, the one has to turn just to see him. Much less like, yeah, he's over there on my right. I got him. It's like the communication almost in a raid and even in PVE activities. It's like, you're going to be able to pull some of those people through, but that's not going to be the optimal way to play. And it's like, they're really going to start to, potentially I see here there's going to be videos comparing the differences of like what are you missing out on if you don't have a new console this and you're just like how much more you can see and stuff is going to be very interesting I'll be curious to see comparisons between really old consoles and the brand new ones like right next to each other and it's just going to be like yeah like somebody rub wax on your screen or something like it's going to be pretty terrible that 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 Vaseline yeah that's what I was thinking of yeah I mean I agree with you I think that um Look, I don't want to, I'm not a developer, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I don't want to disrespect Bungie, but I, I, I am, in my heart, I would assume if we're going to say the PlayStation 5 is the equivalent of a, maybe a 2060 Super and the, you know, the Xbox Series X is the equivalent of a 2080, you know what I'm saying? Then really got to get that Xbox in there, don't you? Go for it. No, I mean, I'm not trying to, I'm not even trying to console. No, serious. I'm not even trying to console. Like, I'm just saying like, um, <laughs> no, I'm just saying like one would think, right? that both of them could do a 1440p 120 hertz 
kind of joint. And I think this is this, this is I think this is this is my opinion. So forgive me, Bungie, if I, I this is how I feel Bungie being safe and saying, look, we're gonna cap you here. You know what I'm saying? And then maybe later down the road we revisit because the same reason why I'm saying this is because in my opinion, I would have sworn the Xbox One X would have been able to do the 60 frames on the med gen refresh. And the fact that when we could, and the fact that the series X on launch on November 10th, because we all know with the brute forcing that the series X is doing right now with back compat is forcing games with unlockable frame rates to get to higher frame rates. So to me, that shows me, I'm again, inferring, I'm not a developer, that Bungie is locking frame rates for stability standpoint. Thus, when you get a Series X, you play Beyond Light, you, you're not going over 30 frames. We know the Series X can do that game more than 30 frames. So that's why I feel this is, again, Daddy Bungie kind of putting that cap, you know, not wanting to mess around with things on the stability standpoint to go over frame rates. Because I, too, like E Sin, would love a 120 frames, 1440 p- or 1080p mode if possible. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That would be another cool option to give gamers. But th- don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining. I'm happy about what's going on. we are getting our field of view. But there's just something I was thinking about when he was talking yeah, and that's just one of those maybe as more TVs. Like right now, there's not a lot of TVs doing 4K 120 hertz, but some mm-hmm. are doing the 120 hertz at lower resolutions. But again, as you one of you guys said, it's not common as mm-hmm. that becomes more of an adoption thing. And they may look mm-hmm. at like, you know, statistics of Steam and see how many people have those. It's like mm-hmm. when those numbers start climbing up that, you know, higher refresh rate displays and everything are in more people's hands, they mm-hmm. might put the development time into it for something like, say, Witch Queen, if it's mm-hmm. made a pretty yeah. more adoption rate over the course of the next year. Right now... I, I, it just may not be there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's actually exactly what's happening. I think it's not uh, Bungie saying, hey, we want to control what you're doing or we want to cap our game lower than what your console can do. I think it has more to do with uh, creating an ecosystem that isn't confusing for yeah. uh, console gamers because yeah. console gamers, and I count myself among this because I hate fiddling with my PC. I have to do it a lot. Um, I hate uh we 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 don't want to have to deal with that stuff that's why right. we're on console and so if you plug a if you try to run a game at 120 fps and mm-hmm. your console says you can do it but your tv isn't having it the frames drop oh. i've done that on pc and it runs at like 24 frames yeah. per second or something like that when it when it when it's it plugged into a, a monitor that can't display it mm-hmm. uh people who play on xbox and playstation they do not play on monitors by and no, large correct. and so TVs that exist that can run more than 60 frames are pretty rare. And I think that, yeah, right. And I think that (laughs) enabling it in a way where it was user friendly to say, hey, your TV doesn't support more than 60 FPS. We need to go back. I think that's the real problem. Uh, I I think they're they're sort of waiting for T. We're kind of waiting for TVs to catch up with what our displays can now do, like our our Mm -hmm. Xboxes, our Playstations. Yeah, valid point. And And to your point, which you're absolutely right is that they have to, listen, Bungie, we know they look at their data. You know, realistically, you know, who really, besides me and a few others, who really has that setup? The majority of console gamers don't have that setup. So to put the resources into that mode at this point, when it's early in the gen, definitely answers that question. So I do, I agree with your assessment. I mean, Series S and is potentially the one as everybody kind of like, even I see um, uh, what Paris, he's always talking about the Series S is the dark horse of the consoles because it's like, that's the one a lot of people are going to get. That's not the big beefy one going for everything. That's the one people just want to get 1080p 60 yeah. for their normal TVs. And that's what it may be for a little while. Two or three years from now, when things start to really get adapting, some of that adoption gets higher, maybe yeah. a different picture. Whatever happens after Lightfall, that may be where we're going like, okay, all TVs yeah. do all crazy things. Now let's talk. Good point. Good point. Yeah. No, you're right, Travis. Yeah. Open my eyes, Travis. <laughs> uh, but outside of that, that's a big one. Of course, we knew the TWAB was coming. And what was the one thing everybody was waiting on? When the hell are we going to get to raid? And we yeah. finally got to figure it out. Oh, you finally got an answer. And that's like one of the biggest things. So for one, it's a great answer. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. it. It's definitely a, a pretty damn good answer. Definitely one more favorable from what I was seeing some in the past. I'm glad we're kind of at this point. But yeah, Saturday, November 21st, 10 a.m. Pacific. That is the world's first raid raid date. Uh, a couple things we'll know. Contest mode will cap all players at 20 below power for each encounter for 24 hours. Kind of figured contest would be there. Artifact power will be disabled during contest mode. That's a big point of discussion. We'll get to in a minute. And then 1230 power is your team's goal to be at the top 
cap for all the encounters. So if you get to 1230, theoretically, you would have as much level advantage as you can for every single encounter. Anything beyond 1230, even for the final fight, you're going to get no benefits out of it. So starting there, the dates and just the details about it. Thoughts, opinions, Cognito or Travis. Travis has a hand. We got a hand raise. Oh, get Travis, him. you, you got go, go, I like go. this a lot. <laughs> That's my hand raise because I'm so happy with what they're doing. So a few things here. I think we can all agree because I, I'm sure some of you guys have at one point in your destiny life tried to tried to at least complete the raid on the first day. Right. Um, the worst part of that experience is not the raid itself, even though that can be really painful. It's the process leading up to it where you have yep. to kill yourself to get to the power that you need to actually play the raid. 100%. It's, it's bad. It's not fun. Nobody enjoys it. It's not. And then and then the people who exploit get rewarded by getting more power and going to the raid at an unfair level. And it's just it's just always unpleasant. And so we're talking about this on Fireteam Chat, which... Uh, streaming now on our um, you uh, it's live okay. what's that show <laughs> after this one stay yeah, here after this Finish one this. Go. Go. Yeah. 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 go ahead man go ahead, um, go ahead but, but yeah the the, uh, the um, w- w- what we talked about was like last week we said what would be your ideal situation don't make the power crazy just cap how much you can bring with you like they've been doing in Grandmaster Nightfalls they did that right uh release it well after the game comes out at least a week so that we don't have to do that sprint as crazily as we've had to in the past and we can start talking about who our teams are going to be and kind of strategizing that sort of thing they did that um as somebody who's reviewing the game i reviewed shadow keep and i had three days to get raid ready and i had to write my review the fourth day that is not fun and it's no. not healthy. And I think for those of us who the raid is for, right? The raid is only played by what, like 5% of the community, I think they said. And and that that those people are the people who are going to take time off work and full commit. And so I think the fact that you maybe don't have to do that now is awesome. Um, and, you know, I'm going to get some more time to capture footage and do more stuff for my review. And then that final Saturday, that'll be my last day I'll beat the raid or at least get to the final encounter so I can see all the content and then I'll, I'll be off to the races and, and be able to write. And so for me personally, it's great. I think for the community, it's great. Most importantly, it gets rid of that terrible, terrible, terrible pre-raid grind that just has never gone smoothly in my opinion. So, and then also Saturday mornings, I mean, perfect. that's like the chef's kit. That's the cherry on top of this amazing new Sunday. Yeah. So this is all great. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I think, you know, I, I will. I know this is a point of contention, you know, a lot of hot, hot topic on Twitter with E and others. <laughs> Shout out to Attic. But um, yeah, look, man, I think this is great. I think this is great. I, I, I think, you know, the, the following week is more than enough time. I think Saturday is perfect because, again, you know, most people got to work, you know, to, to, to do something during that time. I always felt was a little awkward. So I love that decision. Obviously, contest rules are there. And um, it, again, to ease defense, because I know he's on the side of pushing things back. You know, I do agree with him in the first week is too much because you're just now experienced. You, you're almost speedballing through. And sometimes you don't get to appreciate the meal, whether it be the campaign and you're just so light heavy, right? You just, you know, light, 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 whatever, whatever. And I think sometimes it, it is a bit much that, that first week. So I think to, I think that's, I, honestly, I think this from, in my opinion, should be the cadence going forward. You know what I'm saying? Not the first week of release, you get to that second reset. And then even think about that. Friday's always a trials day. Cause I think like, you just have like trials and the raid on the same day. You know what I'm saying? You know, everyone's going to do the world first, but I think that's the perfect spot. The only thing I want to defend the hardcore raider part, which I'm in the defense of this, you know, kind of two week cadence as opposed to pushing it out even further, is that we have to admit contest mode is a big thing for Bungie. You know what I'm saying? They get all eyes on the game. It blows up Twitch from an engagement standpoint. And it's just cool. You know what I'm saying? Just to, you know, people get the raid jackets, you get your championship belt. And, you know, I remember watching, you know, the, uh, what is it, the Last Wish, uh, Ray, you know, uh, finals, that that was pretty awesome, that kind of stuff. And, and it's really cool to see. Obviously, you know, I feel contest mode is the ultimate, you know, nullifier to keep things balanced. It letting us know, hey, 1230, this is what it's going to be, you know, and from that point on. So 
we have to remember this, my last point. This is for the hardcore also, right? So we have to respect the people who want to put in that work and they want to know life if they get the maximum power cap to a, try to achieve this goal. And the only kind of argument I say is for people who don't want it to be two weeks is that, you know, you don't have to raid right then in the beginning. <laughs> like you could wait. Like you, you don't, you know, this is for the world's first guys. Like right? these are for the guy. Listen, I've tried. I'm, I'm there every day, <laughs> but I ain't, I ain't that talented and I ain't got enough, but I'm there. You know what I'm saying? But my team, we'll, we'll get to a certain, you know, usually by the second or third encounter, usually breaks us. And then we're like, all right, you can't figure this out. You know, we're going to have to take two before people start fighting with each other. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, this is a cool, prestigious thing. And I like to see the hardcore community get behind it. And yeah, that's listen, I think this I love this date, man. I really do. Saturday, you know, a week after, I'm all for it. So I'll give it to E because I know this is a hot button topic for him. No, it wasn't for me, or at least I didn't think it was gonna be until my <laughs> until my it. Twitter yeah, until till yeah. something happened on Twitter yesterday. I won't get yeah. into all that. But no, it's like for me, um somebody did point out like honestly for me, if it was one more Saturday. Mm -hmm. Granted, that's Thanksgiving, so that if the holiday wasn't there, but if this oh, was like yeah. a sem September release, but if it was one mm -hmm. more Saturday, still would be fine with me. Because mm -hmm. now for somebody like you, like reviewing a game, I could see like you're like kind of need to put a bow on the very end of this thing. So depending on when that comes out, you might have to do that's where you guys would be like, well, here's all the content. I played through most of it. We're waiting for the raid for like three weeks. Do you do do you do one of your like review in progress or anything like that pending raid type thing? I mean, I can see some of those, but Something like Division 2 when they tried to release theirs. I don't even remember how long after that came out that that raid finally wow. came out. That was that way was. too long. So obviously that's too long. But also, as you guys have said, the three to four day crazy grind, don't sleep, 72 hours of just absolute insanity. In my mind, that's not fun for anybody. And for me, I'm whether it's like 11 days or 18 days for like the next Saturday, if it's not Thanksgiving, since that's a holiday, mm -hmm. that would be the point where for me, it allows more people to get to the grind. And it allows more people to, if they have full-time jobs, you know, they play in the evenings, they get a couple hours, they get more time on the weekends. That's their time to really kind of put in the heavy grinding, even if they're going to do it. That just gives more people a chance to get into even a day one race blind. Because a lot of people, if you pay attention to the Destiny community, it's hard to see some things in a blind state if they don't see it on the first day. But if they're not able to get into it because they have a busy world, but one more week helps them, Contest Modifier helps a ton because you could be what, 1260 power level going in like three weeks later, but everybody's still going to be at that same level when you jump into the raid. So two weeks, three weeks, like to me, that's not, it doesn't need to be two months because then you do kind of lose some relevancy in their seasons. But for me, it was like, I mean, I put a poll on Twitter. It's like, I don't have the biggest audience, but of 175 votes, 90% of the people said anywhere from seven to like 18 to 30 days. Like there was only about 10% of people that said three to four days. So right. it doesn't look like a we decent majority are like, I want a little time for one, like Bungie always gives us a good amount of content, but we also don't get to typically enjoy it because it is burn through it as fast as you can. So you can get to the raid and then you're like, what happened to the story? I have no idea. Cause I wasn't paying attention. I hit skip as fast <laughs> as I can. Like, and that's not fun to go through that and be like, what happened? I think I know, but I'll probably go play it on my second character when I actually pay attention to the story, as opposed to burning through strikes over and over and stuff like that. Now you might be able to enjoy it more, switch between a couple if you're going for leveling. I, the contest was one of the better things that I think they put in, and I'll be kind of curious how the artifact power being disabled plays out, since that's not going to give you any benefit. I wonder how hard it's actually going to be able to get up there, because that's one for the no-lifers that's the one that would be your advantage. I say no-lifers, right. but I mean in 11 days at some point yeah. you are going to sleep in there. Mm -hmm. But as like artifact power, it's like now it is truly <laughs> you probably not. <laughs> He's going to make notes and write and everything else. But like now you truly are on like powerfuls and pinnacles and stuff of that. It's honestly weird to me. They disabled it completely. If they mm -hmm. gave you a cap that you could earn, like, hey, here's this. We have an idea how many powerfuls you'll probably get in 11 days. You play a decent amount. We'll give you 10 on artifact, anything. Beyond. But the fact that it's not there to help like bad RNG on some people's roles, I guess. And maybe in 11 days, it's going to be fine. If right. the pa if it's, you know, the powerful cap is 1200 and the pinnacle, all that stuff, if it's similar, mm -hmm. I'm still just kind of curious how everything kind of plays out. But believe me, the date, I'm good. It's 11 days. If it was 18 and Thanksgiving wasn't there, I could see it probably going either way. 
And then for contest mode, that's the one that just kind of it levels the playing field. So no matter how much mm -hmm. you get to play in those 11 days, if you can get in there and you've got enough power, somebody might have more expertise and more aspects and fragments on their stasis subclasses and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But they're still able to jump in. So mm -hmm. I'm good with this one. Um, two to three weeks sounds pretty good at this point. Just no longer that three to four because I'm with you. We, we want somewhat of a decent schedule. Yeah, three to four days. I mean, definitely was uh, that was rough. You know what I'm saying? I think um, you know. Also, we got to take take into a, uh, account that this season was delayed. Also, right? So we have to see the cadence of when arrivals. You know, when I mean not arrival, but uh, beyond light. Like this um, what you call when it ends, right? Is it, it, you know one would assume they're gonna keep the normal cadence, which means you know another condensing of this season. And if that's the case, another reason as to why we can't really push it out too far the raid anyway. So also the left, other thing we're not thinking about is this, you know, I know a, a big fear about pushing it out is, you know, oh, we're rushing through. But if you remember with, you know, Forsaken and stuff, the raid and stuff was also contingent with the Dreaming City. So who knows if they have some story beat in conjunction with it, right? And there's a lot of things that sometimes get revealed later. We didn't even know about the Dreaming City when Forsaken. We just thought it was the Barons yeah. and we were in Tangled Shore, Avenge Cave. Well, and Forsaken over. was a 10 day release. That was the nice thing about it. Right. Because it wasn't and a three day. And I missed that. So that's why I have faith in this. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not gonna, gonna freak out. You know what I'm saying? Because my thing is like, yo, they shout out to Cactus. He's got a good video right now. And um, it's been actually been out for a while. Just in reference to how Bungie does their price structure every expansion, right? And I believe like Rise and Iron was like maybe $30 or whatever, whatever. And it was a little less or whatever. And maybe Shadow Keep, I think, fell in that thing. But Forsaken was that premium price, if y'all remember, right? Beyond Light is hitting that price. And Bungie, in my opinion, does a fair estimation of value. So I think there's a lot of stuff we still don't know. I know me and you, E, are definitely concerned. Like, all they show is Stasis Powers. And even me, Travis, we talked about it. Like, we hope that's just not it and there's more meat, right? Yeah. But I think, again, shout out to Kagan. I think it was the way you described it. I think the Deep Stone Crypt, I just naturally assumed was the specific raid area. And that's it. We just go there, boom. Yeah. And he's alluding that that might be a whole... I don't want to say like a dreaming city. That might be an area and the raid it also is in part of that, but that could be its own area in itself. So I'm, I'm waiting to see how things play out. And I think value sometimes equates to content with Bungie. Yeah. So I'm curious to see, you know, we may have some secrets here. We may. So there's no need to hold on and necessarily drag this thing out because we may have stuff cooking. So that's what, what, yeah, what I, I think you might be right because mm -hmm. it, I could be wrong about this. I haven't. I haven't mm -hmm. kept up on the Grimoire in, in mm -hmm. you know like a year, but mm -hmm. uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Deepstone Crypt is not on Europa. It's supposed yep. to be on some other moon or something like, like that. So, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I I, I th I'm pretty sure. I mean, if you're doing the raid, they're either going to have some way for you to get there, or they're just going to retcon it and change its location because because everything in the Grimoire is a rumor. <laughs> it could not be true. Can't uh, trust them. I mean, that, hey, mm -hmm. That's what they said. I mean, every, everything's like, it's like legends, right? So it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be uh, canon. It's canon until they say it isn't. Um, <laughs> Sounds but, like George uh, Lucas. <laughs> yeah, they're like George Lucas, exactly. Hey, McClunky. Hey, b borrow from greatness, McClunky. Uh, <laughs> full circle. Full circle, um, baby. Yeah. I could absolutely see the Deep Stone Crypt being attached to its own traversable area. That, mm. to me, would be best case scenario. More likely uh, situation is that Earth is somehow the second location, and that we get because we're going back to um, going uh, back to the Cosmodrome, and I could see that having a lot of story implications in the campaign and mm -hmm. also the content that follows the campaign. So mm -hmm. there, you know, there there might be some some times there. Or, something we'll, we'll see we'll see where they actually go with it but uh mm -hmm. i would be very shocked because my impression i think we talked about this uh when you were on fire team chat cog which is that like my impression is that this one is going to be a little bit light and that mm -hmm. they're kind of prepping us for this is like the rise of iron right and they're right. prepping us for uh the witch queen and i yeah. think mm -hmm. that's going to be the one that really changes things so mm -hmm. i really hope that i'm wrong mm -hmm. um but we'll see. We'll see, man. I'm very we'll excited, see. though. Yeah, I was we'll like, see. I'm we'll kind of, I'm with your boat. It's like, I know they've said Cosmodrome's like the second destination. They're going to flesh it out for year four, if I can get all these numbers right. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and that's, I think, what they remember. They were saying, like, we're going to have the new light kind of experience on the Cosmodrome. And then as the seasons progress, they said they'd be flushing out Cosmodrome. I've also heard rumors or somebody said it officially and I can never remember. Like, stasis on Europa is eventually going to be coming to other enemy races over the course of, like, year four as well. Potentially us seeing it in different places. So the mm. fact that the overall, like, entire director could see more stasis and changes in Cosmodrome could get... That may be the way they drag it out, but I was like, I'm I'm with you guys. If I could get the giant surprise of Deep Stone Crypt, Enceladus is that like baby extra destination. Something else is like that one major secret that we don't know. That's what I was about to say. Because, because I was sorry, gonna, no, no, I was just no, going to say finish, theoretically, like Europa's been developed for what six years now. It's been like year one. So, I mean, not saying, like, it was done then and they're like, oh, we finally put it in the game. No, they, like, they hammered this thing home for sure now, but they had a framework to work with and they've been building on it for a long time. So, they finally, like, polished it. It's like, well, Cosmodrome, that got some polish. Europa was kind of built. Did they have time for something else? And that's, like, that's one of those oh. where, like... I don't want to get expectations too high, but man, that would be one of those surprises. You're like, that's the chef's kiss for me. Like, that's the surprise on that one. If you can, yeah. if they can sneak something like that in. Raise them, raise them, because I agree with you, because listen, they've been sitting on these assets. We've heard about Europa for so long. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I firmly agree. And, and the thing is this too, I got, I got to give you e a little, I got to tweak him a little bit right here, bottom right now. You are That's the normal. <laughs> king. You are the king of complaining. They tell us too much in the trailers. They, they gave, they no, killed I Kane. Mean, I, they I did totally it, right? will claim and now that they're 100%. Not giving you, and you're like, no, I'm worried because I don't know if there's going to be enough content. No, See? But I, I will fully claim that. I will be like, hey, I don't, okay. want, I don't want them to hand me an exotic. I don't want them to show me all the exotics in a trailer before we actually uh -huh. get the guns. Now they're fighting data miners. That's a different issue. But True. I will claim that 100%. But on the other yes. side, like... It's also the surprises are good. And right. but again, like, again, just kind of the feeling of like COVID being a thing, like they've mentioned, like armor's not really changing. Yeah, we're getting subclasses, mm -hmm. which for Kata was like, we get mm -hmm. new subclasses, we get mm -hmm. fragments, we get aspects, we get stasis mm -hmm. weapons, potentially and shields on enemies. So that's like a shift in the game. But as for destinations, like those are just surprises. But again, I'm kind of with Travis where I was like, I still have this weird feeling and like gnawing in the back of my head that this is going to be smaller than i would like and i can't quite put a pin on why but you, again you know this why because I, I i've thought about this this is why mm -hmm. it's because in the past anytime a big dlc is coming out we all felt it and bungie was not afraid to, to show, just yeah. promote the hell out of it forsaken mm -hmm. oh. night and day to what we're getting now they mm -hmm. promoted that so much there is an important caveat here, though, Let's which go. is that we haven't really gotten a taste of Bungie promoting itself without Activision because Activision was its publisher and Activision had the money for all the marketing and stuff. So it could be that this is uh, this. There's no precedent for this, but mm -hmm. we haven't really seen how Bungie behaves when they're marketing their own thing. And it's huge. Good point. How Good much point. are they willing to hide? Now that they're fully in control, because I think in the past, Activision was like, no, 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 you're showing that. Like, yeah, we're, yeah. we're seeing as much of this as possible because we need to get people to buy this game. So Breach. I think that there's a there's a chance that you and I, E, we're like being pessimistic because we are used to that yeah. cycle. Yeah, okay. and that this yeah. is this is new. I really hope that's the case, because if mm -hmm. there's any reason to buy back your own IP to use it it's to do something like this, to like absolutely. delight your loyal fan base with something that they will never see coming. Yeah, and absolutely. I think that they have a really good opportunity to do that. I, I hope that's faith. the case. I got faith in Luke, man. I got faith, man. That's Me my too. guy. That guy's great. That's my guy, he's, he's man. One of, he's one of my boys. Yeah. That's my, dude, I've, I've never a chance to meet him, but- um, Oh, you haven't? Oh, okay. I've never met Luke, so salute to you. Like that's that's my guy. I, like he's to great. Me, oh, he's awesome. And, and I, what, what, when, what you said resonated because I remember during the Forsaken uh, days and the Activision earnings call slander. Yep. And I remember Luke got up and said, oh no, we we are happy. We are impressed. We are not ashamed of what we did accomplish with Forsaken because yep. at that time the rhetoric was financially it disappointed. It didn't live to expectation yep. according to you know the big Activision. And he was like, yo, 
not over here. We're proud of what we did. And I'm like, oh no, Luke, don't get fired. <laughs> At that yeah. time, I didn't know. I didn't know they were leaving, right? Yeah. I didn't know they had plans. I was like, oh no, Luke, Luke went against the suits. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like, salute to him. They believe so much in the product. And um, look, man, I, listen, he 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 knows his game. You know him, and I don't want to make it just like, shout the noseworthy, right? Those two work in conjunction. Mark knows it together a lot, and um. I, I think we're gonna be in for a surprise, man. Big expansion, they never disappoint for the most part, man. You 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 can even if you didn't like Shadow Keep, you can't say it wasn't terrible. You know what I'm saying? Like I would say right. the, yeah, the fall expansion, we always get something. So they told him, man, buckle up, have a little faith, man. The, the, the <laughs> yeah. king is coming back, man. Coming back. Yeah, I agree with that assessment on Shadow Keep. I, mm-hmm. I reviewed it for IGN, gave it a 7.8, which in IGN lingo back in the old grading system mm-hmm. uh, was good, not great. Right. Yep. Almost great. Almost. Not great, though. Like, it didn't didn't yeah. really get there. So, mm-hmm. and I, I still stand by that, like, that's all this sweet. time later. Because I feels about right. I, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. I, I had some. I almost had a lot of great. Fun with that that should be on the box. Almost great. Yeah, yeah. almost <laughs> great. Like, put that as the tag. Yo, you know? y'all found. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, uh, the, almost. <laughs> yeah, going, going back to Luke is like, I remember back in the. That I, I'm lucky enough. I've gotten to talk and and interview a lot of the people, Bungie, oh, over the years, so just being hanging out at their office. So and jealous. like the the thing about Luke is he back even before he was in a leadership position, mm-hmm. he said his stated goal as as somebody who worked at Bungie and had some influence was to make destiny as much like an rpg as possible mm. because a lot of people forget that when destiny like, 1 please? vanilla came out <sighs> come on yeah when, when destiny 1 vanilla came out it was not like an rpg at all its menus were super limited uh it did not have a whole lot of upgrade systems and stuff and he mm. sort of nerdified it that his brainchild with the taken king the thing that was like he, the thing that he drove home was the quest tab that got added during the Taken King. That was the and amazing that, edit. The quest that was amazing tab edit. changed everything. Yeah. It completely changed the way that players interacted with the game. And I think, um, you know, when Destiny 2 Vanilla came out, I remember it was way less nerdy. It was mm-hmm. way less RPG-ish. They kind of sort of pulled it back. Yeah. And I remember I talked to I talked to Luke Smith. We were at this, like... Was, was the only time just I got would, done. my faith was shaken. Continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was so my only I, time I, remember, I was so, faced. Continue, I'm sorry. Yeah, so I had played it before it came out, and and I remember I was talking to Luke at like a bar event you know, that night, and I was like, "Hey, do you remember you told me that you want your goal is to make it more RPG? What happened? The call I, and this is before the game came out. I was like, like what? Like what? Why is it? Like why did you take away the quest tab? The quest tab was not in Destiny Two when it launched, which right. I thought was crazy because I was like, Luke's in like a position of power now. How is the quest tab gone? That was like his thing. Um, what do you say? And he told me. It was just too confusing, man. It was just like a lot of mm. stuff, you know. That was basically mm. his answer. I don't. I didn't. I wasn't yeah. recording him. I didn't write it yeah. down. I just remember that was like his sentiment. Mm. Was like it was just overwhelming. It was a little bit much, and we're trying to like streamline it, and make it simpler. And then he talked about that side tab that you hold the right. left trigger and it comes right, out right, right, right. on yeah. the menu. He talked about that, and I was just like, mm-hmm. that's not the same thing, and you mm-hmm. know it. Like you, yeah, yeah. you know RPG mechanics. That's yes. not an RPG like, system. Yeah, that's like came- a. He came from the world of Warcraft. Like that's where his that's right. like a lot of his world came from. So for me, and Cognito probably will never be happier if I ever shut up about that game. Uh, but I mean, I played that thing for hours and hours and hours. I had two characters with like you know over a month on each. So I was like, I spent plenty, and it's like Diablos and all those. Like I grew up through all of that in the same thing. So tell he me says, more about World of Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> Let me eat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what my my druid and uh what uh lit what is the wrath of the lich king and all that stuff oh that's, yeah that's me if if you're a character in mass effect i'm trying to romance that's my dialogue option for that's you your dialogue. <laughs> that's my, so, tell me more about the justicars <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd like to learn the, more about you oh, that's i amazing. love that good <laughs> reference no <Nice. laughs> but it's like that's anyway, when you say he wanted to make it more rpg like in me i'm sitting over here coming from whether it be Chrono Trigger or World of Warcraft or true RPGs. And I'm like, for me, part of me is like, I'm kind of still waiting. And I know that sounds kind of harsh, but I was like, if you say MMORPG and I play Destiny, I'm like, you're not there yet, in my oh, opinion, absolutely. because mm-hmm. there's a long ways to go between stats, skill trees, all of those things that kind of go into it. It's still very much a shooter like armor, especially right now. Yeah, we're getting a fifth mod socket. 
which is a great thing. I'm not going to be mad about that. But again, armor overall, there's not a lot of like tie to the stats and everything. Mobility doesn't actually make you run faster, which just still blows my mind to this day. There are certain things <laughs> it, when lying. it comes that to is like, very weird. Yeah, I'm like lying. it literally even the text says makes you move faster. I'm like, no, it doesn't. It makes you walk faster and straight faster, straight but does faster. not make you sprint faster, which is still movement. So, mm-hmm. um. So you have like you have ability recharges, which are a separate thing anyway. But it's like, I mean, me, I'm always always pictured like a Titan being tanky, like coming from an RPG build and a warrior being able to be up there and actually take the damage. And the bubble kind of gives a little bit of that. But that's not really I can't take twice as much damage as the warlock who's crushing damage. That's one. So it's like, and I know doing this. What? Yeah. (laughs) You just got an exotic to give you an overshield. We really doing this? Continue. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have this entire thing. I hey. tolerated both of y'all for a while now. Now we really doing this? Woe is Titan. I cannot wait for my overshield to come yeah, back. That's gonna it's be nice. nice. Hey, but you know what? Yeah, I was talking about this on Fire Team Chat because they were complaining about this too because they're. Mm dirty hunters and warlocks <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> which is they were like oh yeah titans are gonna get over shield this is unfair i'm like bro they're giving everybody grenades that create walls our class ability is now useless it's yeah. just a duplicate like yeah. you can see no, through it but That's like it's the so of course they have to give us a way to like trade our class ability in for something that other people don't have right, right. they're even giving hunters the ability the to teleport to do yeah. the, the blink now which mm-hmm. is like to me i mean there's a lot of mixing going on but i i'm sort of I'd, I'd challenge you, E, because I'm I kind of think I don't want it to be World of Warcraft. I'm one of the guys who's I'm kind of like Cog where World of Warcraft is a little too much for me. I, no. I'm afraid of it becoming like that. I don't want it to be like like a really complicated. Do you want the played, Destiny one like skill trees, for example, though? Would you like something closer? to that? I would like something closer to that. I think the gold standard okay, for there. shooter lo- shoot, looter shooters is something like Borderlands three or division right like the division two has a really good way of where you can build your own classes that are equipment based and you can kind of be like i'm going to spec into this type of this this class but i don't want it to be full wow where there's just like a million things to think about and a a 500 different currencies and i'm spending chocolate strange coins to buy you know yeah all that stuff i don't want want that he said too many currencies it would be hell yeah (laughs) there's already too many currencies there's there's already too many and we're about to get spin metal back I talked about this before, but I think it's hilarious that there is now a joke currency that is a real currency inside Destiny. You can get it right now. A chocolate strange coin, which is a fake edible version of an old currency from D1 that nobody liked that existed and <laughs> yeah. now it's dead. They're just trolling it's just like, us. They're just it's trolling a currency us. based on an other currency. Like that they're is really, true. They're, they've really gone places in this game. So I, was like, I, I kind of... Mm-hmm. That's I fair. hope that Destiny becomes the perfect middle ground between World of Warcraft and a traditional shooter that doesn't really give you any power over how you play. I think right. that's always been like the the goal for Destiny, and I think that they've gotten close yeah. and never gotten there fully. Mm-hmm. And I'm excited to see if they can do it. But I do think they tend to get closer, at least since yeah. Destiny 2 Vanilla came out, they've gotten closer with each expansion and given us more freedom and more power. And this, what they're doing with classes... With the the um, darkness ability, yep. the fact that you're getting mods for your classes, it is going there. So if mm-hmm. they can do something like that uh, and and make it moddable, but not so much that I'm you know uh, c- killing uh, uh, chickens to get bone <laughs> parts for my armor type that I want to transfuse. Like as long as I don't have to get there, mm-hmm. I'll be happy. I, I can oh, get I'll on see. board with that. That I can agree because yeah, it's like world is. Like, there are literally 50 hotkeys, I joke, but yeah, I was like, that's too much. But on the other side is like, when they say MMORPG, it was like, there's a few more pieces, maybe not all the way, but it's like, and as you said, the customizing of stasis, this is like their little baby brainchild. I'm honestly yeah. curious, as this is the first one, Solar, yeah. Arc, and Void, how are they going how to consolidate switch up because we have three different supers in each of those are they mm-hmm. going to strip some of them out keep the favorite one is bubble going to be the sentinel subclass period what about mm. the shield that they like developed and put the time yeah. into is that going to be an ad, ad aspect or fragment that actually makes those ha- so i'm like i am so curious to see what this does into mm-hmm. other stuff i still wish stats had a little more weight to them for values of things but that's still me but i was like i'm with you like the stasis stuff that i saw and we talked about that when that came up i was just like this is for one a really cool thing and i'm also very curious how they handle the rest of them because we have three supers 
and then they have one. So I'm kind of curious right. where that all coincides. Yeah, no, I think I think you guys nailed it. I think um, you know, with 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 Luke and these guys, you know, the fact that we finally got them to actually say, you know, uh, it's 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 an MMO, right? Yeah. Like like they used to run from that. You know, when you'd ever you'd get a sound by, oh, we're not this, we're not that. So again, I think to Travis's point, it, it goes to them maybe now separating themselves from Activision, truly pushing the boundary on their vision. And I just think it's going to be incremental to ultimately what they want to get to. I don't know if it's going to be, what is it? Uh, why do I always butcher the name? It's Scarlet, Queen, Tar- Taken, Queen. What's the name of the damn DLC with Sabathun? I always Shadow butcher Queen? it. Uh, the, the Witch Queen. Oh, Witch Queen. Witch yeah. Queen. I don't know why I butchered that. I, I can never say it. Witch Queen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Is, is that the ultimate thing? You know, Lightfall. I think there is a trajectory. I think there is an endgame to where they, they want to go. And whether it be system wise or incrementally, how they're going to do it, and Stace is maybe one of the setting points. We, we're getting a, a content vault. We're getting a pseudo engine update in the, in the same breath with stuff coming in with the Cosmo Drum, this new version of it, you know what I'm saying, kind of thing. So I think it's incremental. They, they're doing as much as they can, I think. As an independent, it's funny they like so big studio, but I'm calling them indie. <laughs> they're I know it's bizarre. It's right? bizarre. Yeah. Like they're, they're the, like the first triple A indie, indie studio. Indie, like it's, it's so bizarre. weird. It's, it's such a unique story with budget, but um, yeah, man, I, I think we'll get there. But I will fight for E on armor. Well, E, I will go to war with him. That armor still needs that. I mean, they're the masters of weapons. They're the masters of the intricacies of that stuff. And battle, but I really want them to dive a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? With armor upgrades, and like you said, even if it's barring division with the gear sets and specking gear out, sets, and, man. Oh, like they really, and then you know, exotic armor. You know how I feel about the constant revisiting of the sandbox. Now they did say because of the new system, hopefully the sandbox revisit cadence is going to get updated quicker. Right, because I hate that we got only time we get an update is when the new expansion comes out. Right, like we should have a cadence either in like a halfway point as well, where there's another update, and and we don't have to wait as long. You know what I mean? Because these things really excite me. It really gets you to go back. Oh wow, they changed this. Wow, they reworked this exotic. Cool. Like I want to get in there. I want to see how this affects the sandbox kind of thing. So I think we're gonna get there. It's, it's just incremental. Remember, they're still on their own. You know, without that that backing. So that's that's just my opinion. We'll see. Yeah. Somehow this all came from a raid discussion, but we fell yeah. off of that topic a little while ago. <laughs> Shout out to the MMO. <laughs> I was like, in sets. fairness to this uh, professional that we've got joining us, there's one more piece that I do want to touch. And it is the fact that we've got the investigation and delayed announcement for the finish of the world's first. Mm-hmm. The fact that it's not going to be like, hey, we finished. They did it. Cool. They're going to like do some data analysis. Check if like you fired 6,000 times in one second. That doesn't seem to be right. <laughs> Like, yep. I mean, this is straight up just because of cheating and mostly, would you guys imagine? Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, because PC players are the worst. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, evil. I didn't go down. He's going off. Oh. <laughs> I'm usually reserved with my bullets. The suit is off, <laughs> I should say. The suit is off. The tie is off. Oh, the <laughs> a superman underneath uh no uh you definitely uh, should yeah, do I, that i think it is it is it is because of cheaters like yeah. absolutely the the there there's not there's nothing i to me it's like a sacred ritual for for destiny players right like the world's first has been so cool and everybody gets so excited and watches all these streams and it would be really irritating if while these streams are going on you figured out that there's some group of like hackers that just like gave themselves infinite health and and got through it in 20 minutes or whatever. I don't think that that's going to happen because to be honest, who, what serious raid team is dying because they're losing health, right? They're dying because they're not meeting the mechanical part of it and they they can't figure out the puzzle and they all wipe at the same time. So in all likelihood, that's not going to be the case. But I do think it's good that they're thinking about this before we get a situation where they announce a world first and then they investigate and find out that it actually wasn't real. I think it's happening at exactly the right time. But yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're doing it for the cheating thing. And I hope that there's, um, I hope they, they do what they did with um, the Dreaming City uh, raid uh, because of Riven, the last wish, because uh, I really liked that there was like a ceremony for it, right? Like when they beat the raid, everybody logged back on to go see the 
uh, you know, the the video play, and there was it, it changed the world and yep. started off the the the, the three week cycle. I, I thought that was so 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 oh, cool. cool, and I would love to see them uh, do something or take this opportunity since they're giving some distance to the raid, mm -hmm. uh, create some sort of ceremony or way to kind of like honor these or change the world uh, yeah. when it happens. But yeah. I, I think it's it's for cheaters, but I hope they use it for something that is that is mm -hmm. cool now that I they agree. have some kind of distance from it. And that's why you literally gave the reason for why um, Last Wish is so sacred to me. A Vault of Glass is always number one, but I never argue with anyone who puts Last Wish as one or two or whatever, because that raid, the way it ended, and just even the sequence of the Queen's Walk with the heart, like that oh, extra, you, you that thought music. Rivers, oh, I thought the raid was, oh, don't get me started, you know how I feel about that <laughs> music. Woo, it's amazing. So it's like, it's part of, it's a, a part of it used in Gambit as well. But, um, you know, just walking out with the heart and then that extra segment, and then you see, I forgot the clan's name, that one. Was it Rezo? I forgot the name of the clan. But anyway, um, Redeem, dude, that was such- Redeem, yeah, it was such a cool thing to see how emotional they were. Like, it, it really resonated. Like, the world first is something amazing. So, with this anti cheat thing, you know, I'm liking that they're going to take their time. They're going to wait. You know what I'm saying? And the other sad thing that we did learn, women, when all the, the dirtiness came out about the Destiny community and what was going on, they some other stuff that was found out was other teams were getting. Dossed and hacked during their world first attempt. Yeah, that's brutal. And Ooh. that broke my heart when I found out that I never knew that. I think it was when Goth team was Cathal affected. Yeah. Cathal and Broman, really, they were getting DDoSed. off. That I had no idea. So to think about what could have been for that team if they were not impeded, if they were not manipulated, you know, against. And um, I love this approach because we need a fair winner you know what i'm saying and not saying no one's not winning fair but i'm just saying like we need it vetted right all the way through and then you know i have no problem with this but yeah man it, this is cool this is cool. i love that they're taking this approach and um yeah man i'm excited i'm excited to see how this thing plays out and it would be cool if they they do some type of transitionary you know what i'm saying piece like you said child, that'd be dope yeah i think that'd be the cool thing for them to get back to is to have mm -hmm. because that's as you said like taking king is still one of my favorites for sure is because of Oryx, Regicide, the lore, the, the whole connection from Crota all the way through to your floating nice. like hive god mm -hmm. off into space who's by scale so to logic. you, massive. So it's like mm -hmm. when you get all of that connected and then the last wish, again, these massive bosses. Now that's the weird thing for me is like, what are we going to fight? Because that's what my worry is like, I'm with you guys when you talked about Zal earlier. I'm worried Aramis is going to be Zal. Mm. Ar Aramis, like the Darkness Queen stuff, or Kel, mm -hmm. um, and she's got that. She's the one we're going to face in this like campaign on the top of a tower. And then I have no idea how it's going to connect. But it's like, it's always, as you've said, Cognito for lore. And you even said it to, when you've talked to anybody at Bungie. It's like, oh, yeah. when the lore of the story ties into the raid and it connects to the world, that's when some of this stuff is the best. And that's, as you said, mm -hmm. Travis, if they can use this delay, it's a little farther out, then it kickstarts something else in the world. That's where I think it could really come together. Yeah, Destiny at its best. Yeah, you're right. The the taking now that I think about it, I guess I've never thought of it that way. But the only raid that really directly I think everybody knew how it tied into the campaign was the Taken King because Vault of Glass is sort of like an afterthought. Like the Vex turn out to be kind of the final boss of the game, but Vault of Glass is sort of just like a separate thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Wrath of the Machines really. I still don't really even know what that, that was about. Hurt it. me because Wrath of Machine that boss deserved better. I was the sure. Axis. Axis. Axis deserved. He was an amazing encounter, and he yeah. deserved a better lore for how yeah. amazing that thing was. But continue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would have been great if he was somehow the face of the evil in that campaign. But the campaign didn't have a face of evil because it was about three missions long and about twenty-five minutes worth of content. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I, I hate that campaign. Sorry. I, yeah. <laughs> Get him. Get him. <laughs> It's, just... it's not very good uh but yeah the and i i think that that's that's the problem here right is is i think you're right we're probably we're going to be fighting because we know it's in a separate location the raid right so it's mm -hmm. probably going to be completely disconnected and it was the same thing with gall why couldn't gall have been at the very least yeah, lasted until exactly. the raid but instead he died and then who the heck is this callus guy like why what? is yeah. he showing well, up the adventure you, talks about callus yeah, yeah. The adventure talks about him and if you haven't read the grimoire you have no idea what's going on no i'm idea. sure most people who've played the raid still don't know mm -hmm. like how callus fits into the picture same they, with they, Val they might Calor. even think that he is gall i i have yeah. no idea you know facts facts 
I felt Val Val Kyle Hall was was mishandled. It's uh, Aspire Stars and and you know you know E knows the jokes I have for the raid layers. You know, clean uh, 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 apartment, clean Callis's apartment, and then and then two the B. penthouse, and go yeah. fit it. You know, go empty his garage and eat it for us. I'm like, That's we're it. just doing errands for this man. Like you it was yeah. really no lore that can. We had Curse of Osiris, which obviously Osiris. I'm a huge fanboy, crazy warlock lore that I want to know about. That story ends. You know, put out these fight was cool, but then it's like it had no narrative connection, like to Eater of Worlds. Like it's just like, oh, Kalos is something. Like, and E, like you said, when we were at, um, you know, GCX, you know, I definitely went to the raid team group, and I was like, look, guys, you know, when you are at your best, Last Wish, Taken King, when you have that narrative buildup. Even I will give Leviathan this. I'll finish. I like that when you flew in, right? And you got a little whatever. And the same thing when you flew in the last wish, you and Petra's talking and telling you why you're doing this. Why I think all this is important to build it up narratively. Then when you end it, you also have to make, like you said, Travis, this villain has to be a threat. You just can't just throw a random villain with a name and then we're supposed to have some emotional attachment to why we're killing him. It doesn't, it's not, it's not earned. You know what I'm saying? That that's my thing. Yeah. That's my problem with it. So I just want them to continue with that cadence because I again I do fear for what's the Aramis that you know Aramis. it's gonna be forgotten. Yeah she's gonna be you know it is what yeah. it is. Five, so, five wow. to eight missions against Fallen, maybe going back to the yeah. Cosmodrome for one or two, finish mm-hmm. up on Europa, fight her at the top of a tower. Mm-hmm. Then other stuff happens. I'm like they don't Facts. connect. And that's that's where it's like again mm-hmm. these separate stories somebody said like Panoptes for Curse of Osiris. Yes. For Kato's on it. Mm-hmm. That was, that was an amazing I, I love fight. the look of that guy, and I yeah. the, the whole that intro mission where they show all the different realities. Yes, and you see, he's like his plan. Like this is what he he's trying to do. I thought that was really cool. Mm-hmm. The entire rest of the campaign is yeah. is really bad, but like mm-hmm. that whole premise could have been really good if they would have uh, doubled down on it. So. And one of the one of the few bosses where actually the NPC Saris uh, fought with you for a little bit. You know, say like, right. I, I want to see more of that. Like they, they've got yeah. so much. They can Even do. the last wish, good raid, but like most mm-hmm. people aren't going to know who Riven is. You know. The, it wasn't like we were fighting older and solve in that raid right. like i i still think that they could have done a better job of the narrative threads there and it's mm-hmm. it's kind of the story of destiny limitless storytelling potential Thank that you. more often than not goes unused right. right well i think that's a pretty damn good place to end it <laughs> yeah outside yeah. of the, it was like we got emblems to earn for first you know 24 hours and all that stuff the emblems you guys yeah. fancy either mm-hmm. the purple or the red one either of those I know you want the day one. You're going to have to get it. It's for your job. You're That's required, right, yeah. sir. You're getting paid for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but what other than that, some... you'll be able to get your raid jacket. I'd be curious mm-hmm. what that one looks like. Yes. How, do you have any raid jackets or is it just suits only? It doesn't count. <laughs> no, I think I've unlocked them, but I've never paid for them. Oh, you never you okay. still have to pay like 60 bucks, yeah, like, right? So I just like, they were like, it was like 140. Uh, yeah, uh, they were not cheap. Oh, yeah. I got my, I got my guard sure reservation. Not. That would be something I would frame and put on the wall behind me. It, you know, I'm not actually going to wear it. So, well, hey, if you I, do I, this one and get that, you you might have to do this one just to just to you know add it to the wall to flex. Yeah, yeah <laughs> makes sense. I was never I was never expecting on this being a recording studio. You know, and, uh, now you gotta, times we live in. Yeah, you got to put the stranger yeah. statue back there. Now you got the drifter statue I saw just came out. Like mm. you got there stuff you go. to add back there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got to say um, before we know we do. Have to say goodbye to a favorite guardian. Seriously, this oh, is. Oh, that's right. Yeah, cannot end this show. No, that's without yeah. saying goodbye to one of the greatest community managers of all time. I've been around a lot, and um, Deej, man, it, it, it hit me when you when you sent me that text. I, was, I, I couldn't believe because I was just worried about the lost stuff. He's like, you didn't get to the end. I'm like, oh, I gotta get catch up. And I, I didn't know, and man, yeah, this I want to let you guys go. You know, what I'm saying like, how how are you? processing the legendary Deej moving on. I was like, I'll give the guest honors because, you know, mm-hmm. you're the guest, man. Yeah, well, Deej is a friend of mine. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I've spent a lot of time with him. He's a really good guy. He's charismatic. He's uh, funny. Uh, he is friendly to anyone and will find ways to, like, build connections with you. And he he built a hell of a team. Um, obviously, that's, that's, that's kind of sad in its own right, anybody moving on. Yeah. But, uh, you know, more than that, I think the way that this affects the Destiny community is I think Destiny and Bungie in general, but especially Destiny, since that's what they've been doing these past six years, um, they're the gold standard for community management. I, I really think that they they have one of the hardest games to manage, which is a huge game 
from a major studio that's got lots of expectations. Um, they play, they make a game that lots of people really love and have tons of opinions about. And more often than not, they've been really communicative, really responsive, uh, and they always feel like they're being respectful to their community. And uh, on Twitter, they're they're on Reddit, you know, in the Destiny the Game Reddit, like commenting. Uh, they even hired somebody from the Destiny the Game Reddit. Yeah. That's where Cosmo came from, yep. you know. Uh, so they they really um, have have kind of I think set the bar. And so obviously, when you look at the guy who built that um, leaving, it's sad, but. I mean, he could not be leaving it in better hands. That much is clear. And uh, I, I don't know if I'll ever see him again because he's mm. he's moving on. And, and I, you know, it's a pandemic. I'm not going anywhere right now, but I, mm. I won't be able to uh, see him in person more often than not. But Deej, if you ever see this, you're awesome. And uh, always had great memories with you. Thanks for welcoming me and lots of other people into Bungie HQ and even more people, uh, you know, the streams that you did and, and, and all that. So... We will miss you. We will not miss you talking about Soros regime a lot. No, no one is going to miss that. That gun is not good. Salute, man. Yeah. The like, end. <laughs> <laughs> you, e, you got some words before I get into my Deej? Uh, yeah. Uh, it was hard to follow Travis, and I know you're going to go, but it was like for watching what he always did, whether it be his talent in E3s and answering, not answering questions. Woo! Uh, Words, his dramatic readings on the Twitch streams when you meet him in person for the first time if he had the time he would share a beer with every single person whether he drinks or not but it was like he would do that with every single person if time allowed like he is in, like I mean got a chance we got like three seconds with him at Guardian Con ultra night I mean could not be like a nicer guy and to see like as you said plucked Cosmo from Reddit Dylan up there now he's got Nicole so he's taken this time to build a team set the standard and I mean I don't know how Bungie did a few special things with Destiny from the start one was you know they combined options of like a shooter and MMO tried to make it this weird mesh that shouldn't have worked and somehow Vault of Glass was the cherry on top that gave it the extra spring of life that it needed but the other thing is they made a community that has been more supportive uh, more helpful the the things that have come out of this community for the fact that it like, I don't know of another game that has a community like this. It does not exist. Breach. And Breach. he is one of the people who made that happen. Like Breach. the way he talked about it, the way he would be out there, his twabs that you would read, all of the pieces that he did were integral in making this game have the community that it does. And without him, it's one of those pieces. Like it may not even be the same experience. He like, not saying there's like 800 people in the studio that didn't make yeah. the game, but he is one of those like rare gems that set this community and the experience we got throughout it apart. So it was like, again, Deej, if you ever see this as well, I got to meet you for about five seconds, but I will say thank you from so much of the community for doing what you did in a way that possibly only you could have done. Yeah, the, I mean, the well end. Well said, brother. Well said. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The other thing I hadn't even thought about this. I don't know if you guys know this, but but Deej himself also came from uh, the community. Like he was on the Bungie forums, and that's where they found him. So oh. it's kind of funny that he kind of then hired out of mm -hmm. the community, and it, so, that's it, there's a nice symmetry to it. But yeah, he's he's good, and and, and mm -hmm. we'll miss him. Yeah, I mean, well, you guys said so much, man. He looks, man. He. For me, as you know, what my history is, is such became a person who started to was a hater of the game when I didn't know about the end game to the staunch defender that how dare you slander, you know what I'm saying? And it's like the hardest thing, the bittersweet for me is when a, a new stream is going to come out and he's not going to be there because yeah. to, to look forward to the new X man, he's such a showman and he's such a presenter and he does a good job of not only serving the base he does a good job of protecting the bungee employees you know and and the, like he said he's so slick with the words you give you enough but not just enough to, to to protect the team and like he's so good with that like he is a tactician is a wordsmith with that type of professionalism of pr like he, the man is uh amazing so salute to him um and i remember like i said i met him a few times and each time was pleasant and you know i always told him i i, I told him, i said look man I said, off record. I said, you can tell us. Us Destiny fans, we, 
we 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 awful sometimes. You got like we oh, we yeah. are the most demanding base. All you got to do is this. Why bungo this? We're like we're bad sometimes. Like I'm guilty of it. We get emotional. We love the game, and when things don't work, and he said, "No, bro, I love it because he said we are we have to serve the community. We need that feedback. You know what I'm saying? And um, he's just excellent, man. He, he's just he just excellent. professional. I wish him the best at you know whatever his next journey may may take him. Whoever's getting them, oh, guys man. get a winner. Whoever it is, whatever, wherever he's going, you are getting a winner. Like this, this guy. And again, he, he, for me, he was the face of destiny during those dark times when I would tune in to these streams and you read those twabs. He knows, like when we started, you know, Flashpoint slash Last Word. Like we would tune into these twabs feverishly just for hope okay they're doing this they're building that and you look for that deej out you're like you know what i'm saying like that brought you joy when the game wasn't doing good because you know they were working you know they were listening and yeah man it, it, it's it, it's it's cool to see everyone in the community kind of rally up and, and celebrate them so i thought that was dope and we wish him the best so again deej if you're hearing it my favorite, one of my favorite wall like, oh, he repped that wall like class so well. Oh, yeah. So well. He yeah. made it his business to put that wall like <laughs> out there. place he could. Oh, I love yeah, it. Actually, yes. you, you guys talking about him is reminding me of so many good memories I have with him. Uh, Bro. I remember, you know, uh, the Sparrow Racing League when they were showing that off at E3. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. he just let me stay in the room and like Sparrow race with him for a really long time. I think he was oh, happy. Man. It was the one competitive mode he could beat me at. Uh, and, uh, yeah. So Dude. we played that. And then I remember my, I think my best memory with him is mm -hmm. we were walking around the uh, Bungie office and he was giving some other people who'd never been there before mm -hmm. a tour. And I was mm -hmm. just kind of like hanging out. Mm -hmm. and I remember for part of the tour, he walked by this room that was supposed to be closed and behind the door, you could just see these big monitors and they said destiny two on it. And this was before destiny two had even been announced. And he just looked at the people, all of us journalists, we'd all seen it. And then he looked at, he looked at the monitor and then he looked at us all like this. Like with our mouths open, and then he just goes, you knew it was coming. And he just carried on. With the, so he just kept walking. Oh, he, he's it's a it. master showman. And the last thing I, well, funny little memories. I remember like, you know, just he would do fun things during the stream too. Like, wait, it was just like the way he present. Like, I, I remember he made like fashion a thing. He was like, okay, though, here's the warlock and the the hunter with their ensemble wearing the the you know the future war coat gear. He would just do funny things to present the game in such a cool way that you had to laugh. We all know about the memes. We know about the smoking jacket. He, he's a showman, man. He, like I said, whoever gets him, one of the best community managers. I've ever seen and and salute to him. Man. A lot of fun memories. He will definitely be missed. Well, that I think is where we have to wrap the show up <laughs> and the proper place to do it too. Man, uh, Travis, it has been an absolute blast having you. I'm sorry. We kept you so long. Um, it has been an absolute pleasure. The floor is yours. Um, if you got anything cool cooking, obviously we know you got the review, but stuff you got working, if you got anything planned, any cool projects, I mean, Floor is yours. Yeah. Anybody who listens, hears, or otherwise, tell them about you. Tell them to go watch Star Wars one more time. Whatever you got. Yeah, go ahead. Please watch the <laughs> McClunky scene from Star Wars and think of me uh, and and not of anything else. Uh, no, but I'm, I'm going to be on the Destiny show next week. I'm on yes, Fire Team Chat guys. every week, uh, uh, on, which we record and release on Fridays at 5 p.m. Um, and then you can check out my review of Genshin Impact on IGN.com and then uh, on November 22nd hopefully <laughs> uh you will see my review for destiny 2 Ooh. beyond light nice nice absolutely, man. Such that's, a that's, pleasure. that's plenty to do between now and then <laughs> absolutely man. such a pleasure to have you here man could have talked to you man. for hours man you're fantastic the jokes same here i feel like we get along i, I yeah. could i could hang out with you guys for the rest of the evening Dude, awesome, <laughs> there's man. there's somebody awesome. behind a camera or a door over there who probably wants you back <laughs> <laughs> absolutely she's actually <laughs> sitting right over here and she's waiting to play destiny well, with me oh, so. thank, oh salute. that's wow. that's awesome. Awesome. Oh, that's amazing. a winner that's a keeper well, right thank there. her wow. for us by the way yes. i will yes. i will yeah, salute there, man again if you're not following Trav, please follow him you know on twitter and again fire team chat Always does a fantastic job. Oh, Welcome to being with Open Mind. Made me feel at home. Man. My first time on the stage. So salute to you, man. I had a lot of fun and, and Destin and the whole team, man. I love what you guys do and definitely looking forward to that. But um, yeah, for me, you already know at Lord Cognito on Twitter. 
Iron Lords podcast. Every Sunday is the Lord's Day. This week, we will have the Wondering Dutch. So up and coming content creator. Uh Uh-oh, you got to do sit-ups? Uh-oh. Did they, wait, someone put it in the chat? It was a long time ago, but it's there. Oh, he's got to do. Oh, this is the best part of the show right now. So right now, who was the one that put, I missed that. So, oh, he's got to do sit-ups, y'all. <laughs> yes. So what salute. is happening? All right, I'm so right so we here at The Last Word, during the pandemic, we really promote fitness. As you can see, E. E. Bontis is a fitness connoisseur, and he serves his community well. So the chat asked for it, they demand it, and we're getting this perfect form. So look at the, the knee, the elbows, meeting the knees, the the perfect form. Yo, yo, but look, he's like, what is happening? <laughs> this is fitness at the last word, y'all. And this is what we do here. We're getting in shape. We're pandemic out. We're stage four or five of the pandemic. We almost at the gym, but we got to keep this. We got to promote this here at the last word. E is a is the champion, the spokesperson for fitness. And thanks to the chat. Who put it in the chat? I missed it. I missed it. <laughs> Who put it in chat? E, I missed that, it. That I, was redeemed at like the top of the show. So I got to give oh, it to New Red. You're welcome, salute. sir. Salute. Now, no more now. Come on now. It's the end of the show. Now. <laughs> New Red's like, can we get a second episode? You get a dab. Relax. My man, just, you know, just put in some hard work right now. So that's what you get in. This is the, we're going to keep it. <laughs> we're going to keep it tight. Everybody get out there. Fitness is important, man. During the COVID. Don't let the COVID belly get you, man. He's out here. He, he's moving. He's moving and grooving for you right now. So that's that's what we got. So you, 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 you he's like, McClung, he's like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no idea what's happening. And also very support this worthy cause. Yes, Sign my name yes, to yes, yes. We got to give my man that sponsor right now, man. He's killing it out here. His boy promotes fitness. Love it, love it. But salute to him. As I was saying, <laughs> I love podcast on Sundays at 11 a.m. Eastern. And uh, we'll have Wondering Dutch on, one of the awesome guys in the community for the Mixed Up podcast. We'll be talking about next-gen stuff. We'll be talking about the PlayStation 5 UI. We'll be talking about Phil Spencer's comments on the Bethesda acquisition. A lot of stuff going on. 900p games on the Series S. we got to talk about it. <laughs> so there's going to be a lot of stuff there. Please check us out. And again, I, I can't thank enough everyone for the support. Support, lordsofgaming.net man really been flourishing thanks to you guys sharing the articles you know it's been so cool to see so support our guys there and um yeah man you know that, that last word you know how we do man one of the best podcasts you never heard yet <laughs> you heard Till it now, now but <laughs> most people didn't <laughs> beforehand thanks to chat <laughs> so salute to anybody new that's coming in to support the chat's been amazing really appreciate the growth and we'd love to see you know what i'm saying the, the support so thank you guys very much. And E, what's going on with you, sir? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, honestly, Travis, it has been an absolute pleasure to have you on. As I think I probably am in the same place as you. He's like, we could probably talk for another couple hours, whether we oh, brought yeah, up like, I didn't even get to like mess with you about your Fast and Furious knowledge. I got to yes. like, I was like, I, I know. We I was didn't even like, touch that. I saw that, but I was like, we moved so far beyond Fast. that topic. I couldn't even get there. I was like, I've seen them all too, but it sounds like you would be a hilarious person to talk about that stuff with. But mm-hmm. no, nah, man, you are absolutely welcome on here anytime. If you're like, I got a little freedom on a Friday. Well, you are absolutely welcome. welcome. So Thanks. it has been a pleasure yeah. for me. I am trying to orchestrate my chaotic week of November for my stuff as well. So for me, of course, it's going to be, you know, Destiny on the 10th. And then Mm -hmm. I'm really trying to decide between Demon Souls, potentially Godfall, all of that stuff that's coming out. And then, of course, Cyberpunk. Uh, I got lucky enough to be an ambassador for Outriders. So I'm still working on orchestrating that one. So a lot of stuff coming. Um Yeah, November through who knows when. I'm probably not going to get much more sleep if I can help it as well. So stay tuned to the channel. It's Ebontis everywhere. Twitch, Twitter, YouTube. If you see the cheetah and that name, you've probably found me. So thank you very much for episode 124. Chat, you guys have been amazing. Hang tight. I'm going to go raid another Destiny stream, of course, when we're done. So we got to do that. Mm. But for this episode, episode 124, October 16th, I think we'll wrap it here. So it has been the last last word. word.